This is, this is you brothers today. Read it. Come on, Leon. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 10. Read it with power. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. That's you brothers right there. That's you brothers. Give yourself a hand. All praises. Y'all fulfilling prophecy. That's what I'm talking about. A lot of times brothers don't know where we at in prophecy. You better start seeing yourself up in there. The Lord called you in this number. I forgot to say shalom to the sisters online. Shalom sisters and to our friends and enemies online. Shalom to you all. Forgot about these guys. Well, today we're going to talk about a few things, just a few things. I'm going to open up with Second Esdras. We're going to talk about the uproars of people. Second Esdras chapter 9. Second Esdras chapter 9. Esdras is a heavy book, a very heavy book. All we want right now, Officer Liam, is verse 1. Yes, sir. Second Esdras chapter 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. Measure thou the time diligently in itself. Go ahead. And when thou seest part of the signs past. And when you see part of the signs past. Which I have told thee before. Now, pause right there. I, wanna, I, wanna, I just want to look at measure thou the time diligently. Measure thou the time diligently. A lot of times we will read the Bible and be perplexed, as I stated earlier, where are we at in prophecy? Where are we at prophetically in the scriptures? So let's take a look at Daniel chapter 2, just for example. Daniel chapter 2. This is why if you fall out this truth now, you're stupid as hell. Shame on your shame, shame, shame. Remember that? You know? <laughs> Some of them are like, what is he talking about? I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. Daniel chapter 2. Give me verse. This is the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. And asked Daniel to explain it to him. Daniel chapter 2. And let's start at verse 40. It's about the statue whose head was, uh, whose head was of gold. Arms were of uh, silver. Uh, the torso was uh, brass. Bronze. Uh, legs were of iron. And the feet were of iron and clay with ten toes. So read that. Daniel chapter 2 verse 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. So the fourth kingdom is this kingdom. This America, believe it or not, is an extension of ancient Rome. So let me rephrase that. The fourth kingdom is ancient Rome. Now as we read on, we're going to show you that it extends to America. Read it again. And the fourth Kingdom shall be strong as iron. That's their military. Rome had the most powerful military in the earth. They even absorbed, Greece couldn't overcome them. They, had, they absorbed the Greeks. Go ahead. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. That's what Rome did. They broke in pieces and subdued everybody. Go ahead. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Read. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of part is clay. And part of iron. The kingdom shall be divided. So now this kingdom here, which is an extension of Rome, it says, where is thou source the feet and toes? This goes into America and the European Union. The ten, these ten toes are the same ten horns you read about in Revelation chapter, what is it, 17? 12. Yeah. 12. Don't mess me up now. Let me go look. You're about to mess me up. Let me look. Yeah. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 and 3. Let me look. Yeah. Revelation 12. I just want to see something. Yes. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Yep. All right. Let's go on back. Read that again, Officer Leon. Daniel chapter 2, verse 40. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of part is clay and part of iron. The kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, 
For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. So the, the reason is partly, it says, as the, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron, that's that military, and part of clay, the clay is we're going to get down to is going to explain it's the other nations here in America. Go ahead. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay. Now he's going to explain the clay. Go ahead. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. That's the United States of America in Europe. Because they have mixed all nations here. It's mainly America first and foremost. Go ahead. But they shall not cleave one to another. The nations here will not cleave one to another. We got to understand that. We can't be marching and protesting trying to join with other nations. Because the prophecy says... They shall not cleave one to another. Read. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. Come on. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Wait, stop right there. Read that again. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Read that again. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. And in the days of these kings, what kings? Those kings that you read about from the top all the way down to the last kingdom is prophecy that God would begin to spread the truth and Israel would start waking up. That's what that's talking about. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Letting you know the Israelites would be waking up. And this is what y'all are seeing right here. Okay, this is just the beginning. You're not stopping this. Okay, go ahead. Which shall never... Be destroyed. That's why I said you can't stop this. You might destroy an organizational name, but the, the truth of this Bible is going to continue. The, the nation of Israel is going to grow and it's not going to stop. That's what this prophecy is saying. Go ahead. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. And other nations is not going to be in it rejoicing with us. Go ahead. But it shall so it ain't going to be no equality of all nations up in that kingdom. In our kingdom, go ahead. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. Uh huh. There and you go. It shall stand forever. See there? So we got to understand that these are the times we're living in. People are wondering how y'all find out this truth and y'all are waking up so quickly like this. Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy. So we're in the last kingdom. Get Daniel 7. We're going to go through this quickly, um. Yes, sir. Start at verse 1. Daniel chapter 7 verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw my vision by night and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. These are the armies of the world striving. Go ahead. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. It's the Babylonian Empire. Go ahead. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, mm -hmm. and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Meaning great wisdom was given unto it. Read. And behold, another beast, the second like to a bear. And it raised up itself on one side. Persia became greater than media. Go ahead. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth the, of the, it. The three ribs was Egypt, Ethiopia, and the Sabians. That's Somalia. Go ahead. And they said, uh, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. This is the Greeks. Go ahead. The, and they had four major armies. In the, amongst the Greeks, four generals that led four major parts of the army. Go ahead. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. Yeah, that's Ptolemy, Lysimachus, Cassander, and Seleucus. Go ahead. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. This is the fourth kingdom, Rome. Go ahead. Dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and devoured and break in pieces. And stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. So this fourth kingdom, which the animal symbol is not clear here. It's not even explained here. 
like the lion was explained representing Babylon, like the uh, bear was explained here representing Persian media, and the leopard, which represented the Greeks. The fourth kingdom, which was Rome going to America, is not explained. Read. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. These ten horns are the same ten toes we read about in Daniel 2, which are the ten common markets or the European Union, the EU. Keep up. Take notes. Go ahead. I, I know I'm going through it quick. Go ahead. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them a nut a little horn. This little horn here is the United States of America. Go ahead. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Right. America plucked up the French, the Spanish, and the British. Go ahead. And behold, and this horn were eyes like the eyes of man. Meaning they saw America saw great inventions like the Industrial Revolution was one of the beginnings. The airplane in 1903. Space travel in 1969. No nation accomplished that. Go ahead. And a mouth speaking great things. The great things are speaking blasphemy against the Bible. Okay. Now, from there. So this is the kingdom we're in right now. Go to 2nd Ezra 1211. I'm showing you how to measure the time. Go ahead. 2nd Ezra chapter 12, verse 11. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. But it was not expounded unto him. Therefore, now I declare it unto thee. So it's telling you that the fourth kingdom would rep be represented by the eagle. That's Daniel 7 that we just read. So Rome's symbol was the eagle, followed by the United States of America. Their symbol, their animal symbol is the eagle. So that's what this is talking about. This is the kingdom we're living in. This is the last kingdom. Second Ezra 1139, please. I know I'm going quick. Second Ezra chapter 11, verse 39. Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts? Whom I made to reign in my world. That's what Daniel 7 was going into, the four beasts. Go ahead. Daniel that, 2 as well. Go ahead. That the end of their times might come through them. Uh-huh. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were passed. So when the fourth came, Rome, followed by America. Go ahead. They overcame all the beasts that were passed. Go ahead. And had power over the world with great fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth. Which much wicked oppression. America, just like Rome, is an oppressive kingdom. Go ahead. And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. With what? With deceit. With deceit. Go ahead. For the earth hast thou not judged with truth. Now it says that because this last kingdom would have rule over the whole earth. Like Job 9.24 says, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Anytime a nation is in trouble, they call America. They don't call Saudi Arabia. They call the United States of America. Read. For thou has afflicted the meek. We're the meek. The word meek means submissive. We are submissive to the word of God. Okay, the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead. Thou has hurt the peaceable. That's us. We're the peaceable. Go ahead. Thou has loved liars. And it says uh, this last kingdom would love liars. Go ahead. And destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit. Like they did to the tribe of Gad, Issachar. And Reuben, go ahead. And has cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. Go ahead. Therefore is thy wrongful dealing come up unto the highest, and thy pride unto the mighty. The highest also have looked upon the proud times, and behold, they are ended, and his abominations are fulfilled. And therefore appear no more, thou eagle. Again, it's telling you, appear no more, thou eagle. This kingdom is destined for destruction. That's what the prophecy is saying. Go ahead. Nor thy horrible wings, nor thy wicked feathers, nor thy malicious heads, nor thy hurtful claws, nor all thy vain body. That's their people. Go ahead. That all the earth may be refreshed and may return. It's telling you that when this kingdom goes down, the earth will be refreshed. Measure thou the time diligently. This is not the time to fall out. This is saying, when it says that all the earth may be refreshed, this is saying the same thing Isaiah 14 is saying. We're now fall down. Is we're now fallen. All it, what how's it? I, you know I can't quote. The whole earth is at rest. It says, and the trees shall sing when this king when this kingdom goes. Find me that real quick. Find me that. You know I'm messing it up. Everybody's like, what? What are you talking about? I don't get it. I don't understand. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 7. 
The whole earth is at rest. That's what Second Ezra said. The whole earth was refreshed. Go ahead. And is quiet. And is when this man goes down, when Esau goes down, there's going to be peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Go ahead. They break forth into singing. Mm. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon saying, Since thou art laid down, no fella is come up against That's us. That's all I want. So now. Uh, do, 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 give me Colossians 4 verse 5. I'm still dealing with measure the time. Colossians 4 verse 5. Then I'm going to slow it down a little bit. I know I'm going fast. But we got classes on all these scriptures. So if y'all can, if you want to go back, you can l visit the other uh, IUIC lessons. And we've gone over this many, these things before. Colossians 4 verse 5, please. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without mm -hmm. redeeming the time. See that walk in wisdom towards those which are without, meaning without what? Without the knowledge you men and women have, God says walk in wisdom toward them. So that's why we got to be mindful and responsible in our speech and in our conduct. What was the last words? Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time means measure the time diligently. From there, give me First Thessalonians 5 and 1. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. So that's right there. It's heavy. So Paul was saying to the Thessalonians, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. So that's why I always remind you, men and you women, measure the time, redeeming the time. Okay? Because you see what kingdom we're in. We're in the last kingdom. So for you to get an attitude... Your wife is the devil. You want to leave the truth because you can't control your wife. You stupid as hell. And you deserve to die. And no, you're not going to leave and be wicked, speaking evil and things. I'm going to get the kingdom anyway. That's not biblical. You're done. You're finished. All right. From there, give me 2 Thessalonians 2 and 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 6. And now you know what withholdeth. That he might be revealed in his time. You see that part? In his time. Measure the time. Deal. Is not the white man being revealed now as the wicked brothers? Yes, sir. Is not he's being revealed as the nation of Esau, Edom? Yes, sir. Is not he being revealed as that he's the devil the Bible speaks of? Yes, sir. Measure the time. Measure the time. So that's happening now. We're all in the midst of prophecy. So we don't have time for uh, you emotional Brothers, psychological, uh, defunct brothers. I'm mentally unstable. Help me. Uh, bro, bro, I can't help you. You simple as hell. Give me, uh, go back to um, Second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 11. Verse 46. No, no. We're Second Ezra chapter 9. Oh. Verse 1. Read it again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, mm -hmm. then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So the angel is telling Ezra that in these last times, the Lord will begin to visit the world which he made. Give me that in Isaiah 29, verse 6. And we're in this time, brothers. We're in this time. So you might be having struggles, but I'm going to tell you, brothers, you sisters too, you better hang on in there. You better endure in this truth. Don't mess up. Read that. Isaiah 29 and 6. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts. See with, that? Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts. With thunder. With thunders. And with earthquake, earthquakes. Earthquakes. And mm -hmm. great noise. And great noise. With storm. With storm. And tempest. And tempest. And the flame of devouring fire. Violent fire. So we're seeing that in the world today. So the angels revealing to Ezra. Let's go back there now. That the Lord will begin to visit the earth which he made. That's him sending his angels down here. Okay. Read verse 3. 
verse 3. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 3. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. See that? Well, all right there. That's what I wanted to get to. Therefore, when thou shalt be seen, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Uh, Officer Lish, are you over there? Show me uh, the California video, California police. It says California police. Uh, yes, that's it right there. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, how long is this? Okay, I want you to pay close attention to this right here. Oh, oh. What the hell? Come on. Come on, bro. Go ahead. Uh, Alicia, are you all right over there? Where's the video? I'm about to hear. He put music videos back there. I mean, I like the Benjamites, but we don't want to hear them right now. Later on, maybe. The, you Didn't he click the video that I, I told him? Yes, that video. Is Abiel over there with him? Don't get distracted. Uh. All right, we ready now. All right, so we're giving, I'm going to show you some examples of uproars of the people. What's going on? Although the investigation is ongoing, it appears that Mr. Fuller has tragically died by suicide. <laughs> Suicide. Robert Fuller mm -hmm. died by suicide. That's really? That's a lie. That's not right. No justice, no peace. They found his brother hanging in a tree in Cali. California community is demanding full investigations after two black men, not one, but two, were found hanged within 10 days and about 50 miles of each other. Can hmm. I also add that we stop talking about lynchings? He saw the one here lynchings. Yeah, everybody mad as hell. This is lynchings. Robert Fuller was found dead on June 10th in Palm Palmdale, California. He was found hanging from a tree in the town square outside of City Hall. Why was it right here in public Why was in it? front of City Hall, right. next to a church, in front of a library? Why was it like that? Who would do that? Fuller, who was 24 years old, reportedly attended a Black Lives Matter protest just days before his death. The Los Angeles County Sheriff Deputies suggested it was suicide. Through the investigation is ongoing. So why would you put out a public statement saying that it was possible suicide if you don't have all the answers? Who made that assumption? Community members and family call for a deeper investigation. It don't make no sense. My brother was not suicidal. My brother was a survivor. If there was another race, there was a white boy, they'd be on it. Following public outrage, L.A. County officials said they would look deeper. Regarding a, a chair or something similar at, found at the scene, there was nothing. The initial reports appeared uh, to be consistent with a suicide, um, but we um, felt it prudent uh, to, to roll that back uh, and continue to, to look deeper. Uh, which is why currently, uh, officially, the case is still deferred and under investigation. Fuller was found just 10 days after another black man was found hanging in California. They're lynching our black children. Malcolm Harsh was found hanging from a tree in Victor, Victorville, California on May 31st. Harsh was a father of eight and loved doing tattoos. Police said they did not recover any evidence to suggest foul play. So these two just decided we're going to kill ourselves, right? In and a tree. Yeah, okay. And on top, but the cause of death has yet to be assigned. Harsh family has spoken out demanding accountability. We are concerned that his death will be labeled as a suicide, and this is what was communicated to us upon confirmation of his death on the morning of June 1st. Everyone who knew our brother was shocked to hear that he allegedly hung himself and don't believe it. To be true as well as to people who were there when his body was discovered. 
The explanation of suicide does not seem plausible. State and federal agencies announced they will be involved in investigations. Reached out to uh, Attorney General Javier Becerra, and they are now going to provide a monitor and review all of our investigation to make sure we didn't leave any uh, rock unturned. I've also reached out to the FBI. I spoke to a special agent in charge, Baviet Morgan, and she indicated the Civil Rights Division of the FBI will also be monitoring this investigation. Lynching has historically been a tactic of white supremacist terrorism. Nearly 6,500 black Americans were lynched from 1865 to 1950. Now this. Well, so I have a theory about the two lynching. Now, there's more than these two. This is just an article I found about these two brothers in California. Uh, Officer Alicia, the last video, now, last article I, I sent to you. Let's take a look, the very last one. No, not that. I just sent it. It's not on that. Watch this. Just take a look at this. Cal remember, California, it was May 31st was one, and the rest was early June. Read this, Officer Leon. An officer was gunned down. The killer was a boogaloo boy using nearby peaceful protests as cover, Fed say. So let's see what this is. Wait, wait, wait. Look at the van. You see the van in the middle of the street. Mm -hmm. This is what the article, the van with the door open. This is what the article is about. This was surveillance uh, video footage. Go down to the article now. Watch this. This ties into the last article. June 17, 2020. As protests gripped Oakland on this May... This is California now. On May 29th. Now, May 29th. Remember, the first guy was found May 31st. The next one was early June. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. A white van pulled up outside a federal courthouse. A door slid open, and a man peppered the two security officers outside with bullets, killing one and wounding the other. Mm -hmm. For a little over a week, the crime was a mystery. Was it tied to the protest just blocks away? Even after the sus suspected killer was dramatically caught in the nearby mountains eight days later. So he was caught in the mountains in California eight days later. Go ahead. His motive was murky. Watch this. Now, federal authorities say the man identified as Air Force Staff Sergeant Stephen Carrillo. This is a military guy. Stephen Carrillo. 32. Uh, age 32. Was an inherent of the Boogaloo Boys. What is this Boogaloo Boys, Read A growing online extremist movement. That has sought to use Watch peace, this. Listen good. That has sought to use peaceful protests against police brutality to spread fringe views and ignite a race war. You see that? Now it's not more. It's, it's more than just these two guys. Go ahead. Federal investigators allege that's exactly what Carrillo was trying to do. They're last trying month. to start a race war. These guys when they got caught killing the killing a cop or a, a federal officer. So now they're trying. You mean they can't connect the dots? That these other two brothers that got hung nearby wasn't a part of this because they were using peaceful protest as cover. Meaning, I'm with you, my brother. I'm with you. I agree. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter, man. Meanwhile, they're plotting and scheming. Go ahead. Federal prosecutors on Tuesday charged Carrillo with murder and attempted murder and leveled aiding and abetting charges against Robert Alvin Justice Jr., who has admitted to serving as a getaway driver during the courthouse ambush, according to the FBI. They just put more, more money into finding these two guys because of the, um, the federal guys that was killed. But the black guys, I ah, label it suicide. It's all t I know it all ties together. Go ahead. Protective security officer David Patrick Underwood was killed, and a second officer, whom officials have not named, was critically wounded in the ambush. Inside the three vehicles Carrillo used, police found a boogaloo Wait, they patch. they had three vehicles. They only caught one driver, mm. but they had three vehicles. Go ahead. In three vehicles Carrillo used, police found a boogaloo patch, ammunition, firearms, bomb-making equipment, and three messages scrolled, scrolled in blood. I became unreasonable, boog, and stopped the dupo dupoli. That's all we want out of it. Go back to 2nd Ezra 9. I'm going to show you all some more. I'm going to show you all some more stuff. 2nd Ezra 9 and 3 again. 2nd Ezra 9 and 3. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people. Uproars of the people. Uh, Officer Alicia, give me the next one on police. 
police violence, uproars of the people. Black Lives Matter, man. Okay. Yes, that's it right there. Turn it up. George Floyd protest versus arm anti. Here's how the police responded. Unarmed protesters gathered to stand against the killing of George Floyd. No justice, no peace. Prosecute police. Though the protests were unarmed and mostly peaceful, some threw rocks at police who retaliated with tear gas and rubber bullets. It appears the tear gas was directed at anyone blocking the streets. The police reaction contrasts with the response to anti-lockdown protests in which many white armed protesters were unharmed. Nationwide protesters with assault weapons stormed public spaces. Yes, they're inside the state capitol. Thought you were getting respect for petitions and realized nobody respects you. Nobody respects anything that you do. I just want to follow up with this nice lady just announced, all right? Whatever they decide about the executive order, we want to give you the right to voice your First Amendment rights, freedom of speech, and we please, we please just beg you to keep you. You guys keep doing what you're doing. You're all Keep doing what you're doing. Now, if we were doing that, they what? Handcuff us all and shoot us down dead. He doesn't have a right to open carry? An all white man with his hand next to his gun resisted arrest. He was apparently detained without injury. He's got his gun on him, right? Right there. Let's do this. Let him show his permit. He's not going to pull out a gun on you. Let him show his permit. Guys, I have a permit. Open carry is prohibited in the city of Denver. These are examples of uproars of the people. So we know what, what, what day and time we're in. Police encounters are a leading cause of death for young black men. Black men and boys are 2.5 times more likely to die in a police encounter than white males, according to a Rutgers University study. All right, Officer Alicia, give me the one that says, uh, what's the name of this one? Uh, verse, uh, give me the one that says, uh, simmering racial tensions. Give me that one. Yeah, that one. Again, these are examples of uproars of the people. In widespread unrest not seen in decades, American cities from Seattle to Washington, D.C. burned as many peaceful protests you turn it during up? the day turned to rioting and destruction by night. <laughs> Governors in 12 U.S. states have activated National Guard troops to no quell peace. the violence and restore order. No peace. It was the latest move in a week of escalating tensions after George Floyd died in police custody. Derek Chauvin, the Minneapolis officer who pinned Floyd to the ground using his knee, now faces third-degree murder charges in connection with Floyd's death. 
but protesters demand more, including charges against other officers involved. I want to make a change for my people because too long that this has been going on and things need to change around everywhere because nothing's going to change if we keep talking, obviously, or keep posting something on social media. So, Since Thursday, the Associated Press reports police have arrested about 1,700 people in 22 cities across the country in connection with the violence that has left dozens of businesses burned, officers wounded, and several demonstrators killed. What began in response to Floyd's death in Minneapolis has also reached outside the U.S., drawing hundreds to the streets of London in a sign of solidarity with those seeking racial equality. Well, we've seen for hundreds of years black people and people of color be absolutely abused and killed on the streets, and it's just getting worse and worse. We've had enough, and if they're not going to listen, we're going to scream louder and louder, and we're not going to stop until something is done. We've had enough. This is people who have had enough. It's time to make some changes. Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar represents parts of the city of Minneapolis at the epicenter of the demonstrations and says there needs to be nationwide reforms. What we are seeing, the unrest we are seeing in our nation, isn't just because it's prophecy. of prophecy. the life that was This taken. goes with Daniel too. It's they should not cleave one to another. So many people have experienced this. So many people have experienced injustices within our system. In prepared remarks after the successful launch of the first U.S. astronauts on a commercial spacecraft, President Donald Trump said while he supports peaceful protests, he won't tolerate lawlessness and destruction. The memory of George Floyd is being dishonored by rioters, looters, and anarchists. The violence and vandalism is being led by Antifa and other radical left-wing groups who are terrorizing And he's right on that part. People don't like Trump, but he's telling jobs. the truth on this part. This is how them brothers got burning lynched, hanging out with white folks and say, I love you, man. It was a message his national Look at them. All these, you got to start Trump seeing all white people as violent, all of them. Another night of unrest. And the president's outraged by that, and we all are, and, and that has to stop. And we're calling on the FBI to investigate Antifa and, and get to the bottom of these, these violent rioters. And I don't want them confused with peaceful protesters that have every right to go out to the streets. That's, that's what makes America different from, from many other countries around the world. With the large crowds that gather to demonstrate comes the risk of further spreading COVID-19. As the unrest in America continues, the number of infections in the U.S. from the coronavirus is also rising, along with the death toll, which now exceeds 100,000. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, Chicago, Illinois. Hey, Alicia, give me the one. Who's sowing chaos? Who is sowing chaos? So again, this is examples of uproars of the people. Go ahead. Who is behind the violence and vandalism at the protests for George Floyd? The Trump administration has been quick to blame the far left. It's the violent Antifa uh, radical militants that are coming out under cover of night, traveling across state lines, uh, using military style tactics to burn down our cities. But analysts and authorities on the ground paint a far more complicated picture. And the FBI is appealing to the public for help. Violent extremism in the United States uh, is hyperfluid. Uh, these groups overlap, interact, merge, splinter. See that? Overlap, emerge. interact, Antifa, merge, and short splinter. Short anti fascist, started in 1960s Europe. Experts on extremism describe it as a non hierarchical, loose group that often gets into skirmishes with neo Nazis and white supremacists. After peaceful demonstrations escalated, President Donald Trump declared his intention to designate Antifa a terrorist organization. There are no domestic terrorist organizations uh, identified by the U.S. government. In terms of categorizing Antifa, most analysts don't describe them as, as terrorists uh, in nature. They do not seem to be engaging in premeditated uh, violent attacks on uh, symbolic targets, on civilian populations. Another left-wing group accused by authorities, including New York Mayor Bill de Blasio, anarchists who allegedly damaged corporate and government property. But other authorities, like the mayor of Minneapolis, where Floyd was killed in police custody, say far-right groups are sowing chaos. They believe, and this goes back to one says the far uh, left, and that's election, southern, that, your friend y'all stop, SPLC, they, they, she's that black. There's right? a white genocide Simple afoot. The boogaloo, originally a genre of Latin music and dance, is now a code word used by Hawaiian shirt-wearing pro-gun activists 
calling for a second civil war. See that? Members of the movement calling protested COVID-19 lockdowns, and in May, police charged one adherent in Texas with plotting to kill officers. Mm -hmm. There's also you Identity fly, Europa, double. now rebranded as the American Identity Movement. Twitter recently told the media it suspended an account linked to the group, which posed as Antifa and promoted violence at the George Floyd protests. Founded by an Iraq war veteran, its followers chanted, Jews will not replace us at the fatal Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville in 2017. Taken together, analysts say they're seeing an alarming trend. Over recent years, terrorism has become more partisan in the United States, where individuals have carried out active acts of violence on behalf of one of the two political parties or candidates. According to the Anti-Defamation League, 90% of extremist murders last year were linked to right-wing groups. The center is concerned about the distraction that the Trump administration um, has caused. It's not about Antifa um, disrupting protesters. It's about the, the message of the protesters being able to get through. Sasha Ingber, Newsy, Washington. Now, uh, Officer Alicia, I sent you one last one that Captain Zeff had sent. Go, you go there. Yeah, right there, that one right there. Let's blow that up big, Officer Leon. Fear grows of modern day lynchings as five people of color are found hanged. Y'all better stay away from Esau, I'm telling you. They, our people are simple as hell. They fall for these, they, they said splinter groups, you got Antifa and you got other Edomite groups out there who want to bring about a civil war. Go ahead. Raise it. Come on. Alicia. Authorities are now probing the recent hangings of six people of color in four states. Officials have ruled every case to be a suicide. And you see this crap? Every case is a suicide. You can't make this stuff up. You almost have to wonder if, if the authorities are in on it. Right, exactly. For them to be saying that. Right. Mm. Go ahead. But many fear some of the deaths might be modern-day lynchings. On Wednesday, police found a 17-year-old African-American boy hanging from a tree in an elementary school playground in Spring, Texas. On Monday, a Latino man was found hanged in Houston. Hangings have also been reported in New York City. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. So you say they said that the Latino boy... It's good that that's mentioned in there because sometimes our, our northern Negro, kingdom brothers, Negro. right, they feel like, well, they, this is not affecting us. Right. Okay. They, that's the, not the way they see it. Mm -hmm. Read it again on Monday. Yes, sir. On Monday, a Latino man was found hanged in Houston. Hangings have also been reported in New York City and in the California cities of Victorville and Palmdale. That's the two that we read about earlier, go ahead. Meanwhile, a hate crime probe has begun in Oakland, California, after five nooses were found hanging from trees in the city. So where did they get the idea or thought that it's a possible suicide? You found all these nooses, five nooses just hanging, and you think it's suicide. Hey, y'all, what's up? Look, there's a noose. I think I'll hang myself. How about you? Yeah! Nobody does that. Go ahead. Former. No, no, that was it. Oh, okay. From there. From there. I want to talk about for just for a second. Officer Alicia, give me uh, Black Lives Matter. Your favorite group, Black, or oh, my favorite group, Black Lives Matter. And I told all you brothers, y'all need to start sharing this, this clip right here with this woman. Or y'all could do it yourselves. Yeah, play that. Hi, everybody. Okay. Turn it up. So I saw this video on um, social media, and I'm all about researching first. So, um, because, you know, things happen. Anyway, I researched it, and I'm like, I'm completely shocked. And I just wanted to show you guys. I'm sure a lot of you will have seen the video by now or will be seeing it soon because it's like, going viral it's going huge but i can't believe what i'm seeing okay let me turn my phone on so i am on the black lives matter home page okay um you i'm here on my computer black lives matter um this is the legit page well, I'm trying to get my mouse going legit page of the black lives matter i'm just sad right now so like 
shocked and sad. But anyway, so I'm here. Let's just say I want to make a donation. So I'm going to donate and a new page pops up, okay? This is the donation page. Now, if you look in the search bar, it says right here, it's secure and it's going to actblue.com. That's who you're going to be donating to. So now it's no longer Black Lives Matter, it is to actblue.com. How do I know that? You go to number two and it says Act Blue Charities and it goes on. Um, basically, that's where your money is going to these Act Blue Charities, okay? So um, they have this option here where you can look at the terms and conditions, which I clicked on that. It takes me here. So I go here and it says it's used for political contributions. Like what? Okay, I thought Black Lives Matter, you're donating to a cause, right? To help um, Black Lives, right? No, it gets better. Black Lives Matter there. So I go there. So now I'm going to look at um the charity event so i want to know where their money is going well on that website it says you have to go to like go to phone numbers all this stuff well if you go to opensecrets.org it's a real life site it basically gives you um all the political stuff like where money is going politically right okay so i clicked on that went to their site here so here's my screen where i went to their site and i searched up act blue well there it is look at that so I clicked on that, that's blue expenditures, because I would like to see where all that money is going. This is just from the election cycle of 2020, okay? So I'm going in, so Black Lives Matter, remember, I donated to Black Lives Matter because I want to help a cause, right? Act Blue takes my money, and now this is where all of that money is going. This gives you an entire list of where all of that money is going. You got administrative campaign expenses, what campaign expenses, contributions, which it doesn't even give nothing here. It just like, okay, what? And then they charge, they you, fundraising, okay, media, salaries. Wow, that's a lot of salaries. That's a lot of money. Okay, uh, strategy and research, okay. Um, unclassifiable. Look at all these unclassifiable monies. Now it gets even nastier. You go to the top vendors and recipients of the money that you're donating to Black Lives Matter. Look where your money is going, people. Look where it's going. So at the end of the day, this is a reminder, a reminder, research where you're donating your money and make sure it's going to an actual cause because now basically what happened is this is not for the black community at all none of it is it went to it's a corruption it went to the democratic parties where all your money went to you helped no black lives in this in this so donate on other sites if you are choosing to donate love to all do your research Wow, so Black Lives Matter, again, has nothing to do with black people. That is a Democratic National Committee party. Absolutely. You notice that the woman pointed out, because you showed you on the computer, that that was only for the year 2020. Right. How long have, quote-unquote, Black Lives Matter been running? Since, uh, since, Trayvon, 20, Ma yeah, right, Trayvon, since Martin. Trayvon Martin. So that year, the year after that, all the way up, to this time period here, that's those kinds of monies was going to those same people. So you're just looking at one year out of what, let's say about four or five years. How long is Trayvon was about four or five years ago, right? About 20, wow, 20, 2012. So wow, you're talking about eight years, basically, of monies. You only just saw one year. What about the seven years prior to that? That's where this money's been going. That's the reason why nothing got better for so-called black people. Because they don't give a damn about black people. And you got to see, when you see these damn uproars amongst the people from city to city, state to state, country to country, it's like, how is this being organized? Who's behind all of this? It makes no logical sense. But now, you sit back and look at the, what's going on in the world. It's all plotted. It's all planned. Right, rehearse. Read that again, Officer Leon. Second Ezra 9 and 3. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 3. Therefore... When there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Read. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee. 
Even from the beginning. Even from the beginning, the Lord said the days would be evil. Give me that, for example, Genesis 6 and 5 regarding the flood. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So just like back then, so is it today. The heart of man is totally evil. That's what Christ was warning us about in Matthew, the 24th chapter. The love of many shall wax cold, for example. Go back to 2nd Ezra. 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, verse 4. Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders. So in the beginning, when the Lord was dealing with, with our forefathers, it says, even so, the times also in the highest have plain beginnings. Go ahead. In wonders. In wonders. And powerful works. When you saw the prophets like Moses, Elisha, and Elijah, they had made wonders and there was powerful effects. Go ahead. And endings in effects and signs. But in the end days, there's going to be nothing but effects and signs. Let's show you what the signs is talking about. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Here we go. Effects and signs. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15, then jump to 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So the Lord warned us, if you break the commandments, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. And these curses shall be upon you for what? A sign. A sign. Go ahead. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. And upon thy seed forever. Now give me Isaiah 30 and 17. Isaiah 30, verse 17. Here we go. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall ye flee. This is how we was fleeing from the nations. We had that spirit of fear on us. Go ahead. Watch Till ye this. be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain, as an ensign on a hill. So the, the destruction on our race, on our nation, was so extreme the Lord says, till you be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain and as an ensign on a hill. Meaning what? We're that sign. We're the sign of what? That we're the Israelite. All these curses are on our people. And the Lord is saying, it's going to be like a beacon. Just examine the curses and look throughout the earth. It's going to be like a beacon. Those are the Israelites right there. Those people that suffer colonialism and those people that suffer slavery, those are the Israelites. And the signs are the curses. Go back to 2nd Ezra, please. 2nd Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 7. Six, 6. Verse 6. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. And endings and effects and signs. Go ahead. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. So in order to be saved in these last days, we must have works and faith. So don't let anybody tell you you don't need works. You do need works. Give me that in James 2. We're going to come back to this. James chapter 2, verse 14 through 20, please. James chapter 2, verse 14. Yes, sir. James chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, Though a man say he have faith and have not works. So what does it profit, my brother, if a man says he have faith and have not works? Go ahead. Can faith save him? Can faith save you? Go ahead. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? So James, the apostle James, gives a basic example. He said, if somebody's destitute of food and clothing, you just say, be thou warmed and filled. What does it profit? Have you helped them? No. You have not given them, him or her those things necessary to take care of themselves. 
So this is how we as a nation of Israel, we must be amongst our own people. Go ahead. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Right. So even so, faith, if it have not works, the works is doing what? Providing those things necessary for the body, food and clothing. Just saying, uh, be thou warmed and filled, God bless you, in other words, means nothing. That's faith without works. Because you don't mean God bless you. Okay, read. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So James says, um, one may say, I have faith, and I, I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Read. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith. Excuse me, verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. You know what's funny about that verse? When, when Christians say uh, Satan does uh, despite what the Lord wants. No, Satan trembles at the name of the Lord. All the demons tremble at God. All of them. Okay, why? Because they're all under order. Every last one of them. Read that again. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Mm -hmm. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So faith, again, faith without works. This is why with our faith we must be in this truth, putting in works. Whatever you're ranking, as whether it's member, soldier, officer, captain, deacon, bishop, whatever. The sisters, uh, the senior sisters, the younger sisters, all of us must be putting in work for the betterment and uplift of this truth. Y'all understand that? That's what it's going into. Go back to 2nd Ezra 9. You at verse 8? Yes, sir. 2nd Ezra 9 and 8. Start at 7 again. Yes, sir. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be, and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils. We shall be preserved from the perils that's coming upon this earth. Go ahead. And shall see my salvation in my land uh -huh. and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Read. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Now I want to pause here for a second. Read that again. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And it says, then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. You have many of our people who claim to be followers of Christ. Like the lady today at camp, she said she is a disciple of Christ. Really? Our people who have the Bible and don't do what the Bible says, they are guilty of abusing God's ways. Let me give an example. Give me 2 Corinthians 2.17. Second Corinthians 2 and 17. For we are not as many. For we. For we. Go ahead. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. You have all our people in Christianity who have been taught and who love to corrupt the word of God. They'll read the scriptures and still reject the scriptures. Go ahead. But as of sincerity, but as of God. In the sight of God, speak we in Christ. So us as teachers, we got to teach this book in sincerity, okay? As of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Let me give you another example beside how they corrupt the word of God. Romans 6 and 1. Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Here's that word grace. That's what the lady was yelling today. Grace, grace. That's what the, all on TBN. That's what you hear. Grace. You hear all the famous black men. It says, Grace. Read it again. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Meaning, that, shall we continue in breaking God's commandments? That grace may abound. That grace may abound. Let's see what the answer is. God forbid. The Bible says no. God forbid means no. This is a way of abusing God's laws, abusing God's ways. When you use grace, 
as an excuse to break God's laws. Now, don't read what we just read here. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, meaning breaking God's law, that grace may abound? God forbid. The answer is no. A Christian will read that and go, we don't have to do the commandments. We don't have to do any, anything God says about the law. That's how their mind is corrupt, destroyed, abusing God's ways. Okay? Give me 2 Thessalonians 2.10. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Meaning, and with all deceit of unrighteousness, meaning breaking God's laws. With all deceit of breaking God's laws. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. And them that perish. And them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Because they receive not the love of the truth. The truth is what? The law. Go ahead. That they might be saved. That they might be saved. Read. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. The Bible says because you reject the truth, the Lord's going to send you strong delusion that you should believe a lie. Go ahead. That they all might be damned. That they all might be damned. Go ahead. Who believe not the truth. Who believe not God's laws in Christ. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. But had pleasure in unrighteousness. Officer Alicia, give me the clip that says Pastor Cordell Jenkins. Pastor Cordell Jenkins. Yeah, that's him right there. Uh, Officer Alicia, we're only gonna we're gonna start at zero, Mark. We're gonna go to seven fifteen. I want you to pay. This is an example of how our people abuse God's way. These are ministers. They have the Bible. They claim they love Jesus or Yahweh Shai, whichever name you want to use. Go ahead. Praise to the ministry. Some of y'all are catching the Holy Spirit. Unholy Ghost I'm sending uh, my anointing back to the church. We hear so much on the news, God help. We hear so much on the news. We hear bad news. You're, you read in the papers, bad news. Get on Instagram, Facebook, bad news. And the question comes, is there a word from the Lord? This is jailhouse video of pastors Cordell Jenkins and Anthony Haynes being booked into the Lucas County Jail. The pastors were arrested last week for alleged sex crimes against kids. Thursday, they'll face a federal Wait, judge. Pause it. You can't no make problem. this stuff up. He said, is there a word from God? And he's involved in sex trafficking. Both him and the first two preachers we just saw involved in sex trafficking of children. You can't make this stuff up. Go ahead probably just stay right there. That really uh, becomes a matter for the U.S. Marshals uh, of where to house them. Uh, but they'll probably stay there until after, you know, their Thursday detention hearing. Once that happens, it'll be determined whether they will be continually uh, held or if they will be released on some kind of bond. The documents released by the FBI detail numerous explicit sexual encounters the men allegedly had with kids. They show Pastor Haynes introduced a child identified as Juvenile 1 to several adult males. These males provided Juvenile 1 with money in exchange for sexual activity. The documents mention a woman as well as other adult males who were introduced to Juvenile 1. Could there be more arrests coming? I can't speculate on that. It depends upon how the investigation unfolds. Uh, again, this is an ongoing investigation, and if it uh, leads us to additional people that need to be charged, then obviously we will work with the U.S. Attorney's Office in, in getting those charges. The men allegedly had sex with their victims at local motels. Pastor Jenkins is accused of having sex in his office at the church. Court documents show FBI agents also obtained surveillance video from the Red Roof Inn 
of Jenkins entering a motel room and leaving about an hour later. The Red Roof Inn, also referred to as the Red Roof, sent 13 ABC this statement. This has become a police matter and Red Roof is fully cooperating with local authorities. Red Roof does not comment on ongoing police investigations. FBI agents collected evidence from the minister's homes. They also searched Pastor Jenkins' church, Abundant Life Ministries. FBI agents say an indictment could be handed down in 30 days. Charges could change from what they've been held on right now. There could be additional charges. There could be uh, something that, okay, maybe this charge fits better. It could alter uh, between now and indictment, or it could stay the same. The evidence collected from the search warrants remains sealed. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Dawson from D&D TV and also Dawson Speak. On behalf of Denise and myself, we'd like to thank everybody who's rated, comment, and subscribed, even our new subscribers who have joined us. We appreciate it. And for those of you who view our channel from time to time, we appreciate you too. Now, we understand that no one is perfect when it comes to living life, and many have often turned to spiritual leaders for guidance. However, there comes a time when a person ceases to be a man of God and instead becomes an agent of Satan. Two Toledo, Ohio pastors are now allegedly in that category after being arrested for human trafficking. Pastor Cordell Jenkins, 46, founder and leader of Abundant Life Ministry in Toledo, along with Anthony Haynes, 37 years old, are accused of exploiting a then 14-year-old girl in a series of sexual encounters over a period of years. According to criminal complaints, the girl was first indoctrinated when Haynes and another woman had sex in front of her. After that encounter, there were several more sexual encounters at various hotels, motels, and even at the church itself. Evidence of the crime was caught by security cameras showing the girl entering and leaving hotel rooms with Haynes and Jenkins. The FBI took the lead on the case and a representative stated that the most recent encounter occurred last month, March 2017. My only question that I asked on the last video when we talked about the other pastor, Kenneth uh, Atkins in uh, Burnwick, Georgia, when we talk about uh, the things with Bishop Eddie Long, when we talk about Chris Hill, when we talked about all these different pastors, and you all see this on YouTube, black women, y'all are up in these churches with y'all kids. Where are y'all? Where are y'all with y'all kids? I'm talking to the black queens, the black, you know, the, these women who who, who want to throw out scriptures and don't touch the man of God. And if the man of God gets caught cheating on his wife, it's not, you know, uh, you know, th that's just how men are. And, you know, every man cheat and all this kind of stuff. And then you blame the woman more than you blame the man. Where are y'all at, man? The heads Y'all children are getting messed over. Y'all are getting messed over in these churches. And I know it's not all churches. Y'all, come on, let's not do that. But it's more. It's more churches than not. That men just get this power, this mind control that they can have over y'all. And all they got to put on the end of a sentence is thus said the Lord and God said and God spoke to me. Well, here are two men who are supposed to be the men of God who always say God spoke to me and let's shout it out. And the word of God said, y'all heard them preaching in the beginning of this stuff. And if you want to hear them preach anymore, they got videos on YouTube. Y'all can go look and see how char charismatic they are. How they're trying to persuade the crowd and they're so they're so in touch with what's going on and what God said. But God wanted y'all to be accused of sex trafficking. And it wasn't only these two from the documents, the, the complaints, the FBI complaints. They said they actually had other men and there was a woman in, involved, too, who would come over and they would do this to this young girl. Now, I heard some people saying, well, you know, a lot of these kids, they're fast now and they know. Let me tell you all something. I don't care if the kids fast. I don't care if the boy fast, the girl fast. When they're underage, they're underage. You as an adult have to protect, have to uh, control your own sexual urges. Right. I don't care that she's 16 and she's developed like a woman and she's shaped like Nicki Minaj or Beyonce. She's still 16. I don't care that he looks like uh, who, who LeBron or whatever. And he's on the, uh, the high school basketball team or football team as a, you're still a teacher. That's a kid. And the thing is that we let a lot of this stuff go when it happens to young boys and we get on it when it happens to girls. But these women need to be held accountable just as much as these. So. We looked at that as an example of how 
Israel, our people, will abuse the ways of God. It will, they will use their, um, their platform, their charisma, their, their brief and limited knowledge of scriptures to manipulate silly women. Give me that, yeah, give me that scripture in Timothy about lead captive silly women. Y'all know that one. And he asked a valid point. Where are you women at? You got your kids all up in the church, and these are the, some of the things that's happening. Okay. Second yeah. Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The form of godliness means they can quote some scriptures. They can find scriptures. They, they have a, a, a limited understanding of the Bible. That's having a form of godliness. But what? But denying the power thereof. Meaning they deny the power of the Lord, meaning the commandments. That's the power of the Lord. They denied it. No, no, no. You don't have to do God's law because that's what God's power is. Because remember in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, he said, keep my commandments. You'll be the top nation above all nations on the earth. Blessings upon blessings. We said, ah, I'd go opposite. Okay, so they, we denied the power of God and went to the breaking the commandments. Then we got the curses. Now bottom lip stuck out. Give me that in Sirach 7 and 23. Uh, Bishop, you want to keep Oh, reading? you didn't finish it? Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. From such turn away. Mm -hmm. For of this sort are they which creep into houses. Creep into house or motel rooms. And lead captive silly women laden with sins. They look for silly women laden with sin. You can spot them. I know you brothers. Y'all can see which sister is laden with sin. It's just all in a look, okay? Even the way she says, Shalom, most high in Christ, bless. You see it. When she bend down, she grabbing them ankles. Sis, you ain't got to grab your ankles when you say Shalom to me. The hell is this? <laughs> What's going on here? You look for those silly women. There's a lot of them. Go to Sirach 7 and 23. And they say, oh, but she, she's 16. She's fast. Yeah, but you're an adult. You better, con brothers, control. And that's why I said, when you men have uh, counsel with these sisters, don't be in no room alone with them. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. Has thou children? Instruct them and bow down their neck from their youth. Read. Has thou daughters? Have a care of their body and show not thyself cheerful toward them. Go ahead. Marry thy daughter. And so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. As a father, your objective is, if you have a daughter, is to get her married in time when she's ready. Okay? And then you got to find a young man who's equally ready to be married. Meaning properly, what's the word? He, he, he is properly uh, groomed in how to be a husband. And I've seen a mistake many times where you get a young man who he, he, he wants to marry a sister with one child or two children. But he's never had an experience of being a father. So he's thrust into a situation. And you sisters, y'all got you can't be that simple. You're thrust into a situation with a young man who has no father experience in raising children. Now he's an automatic daddy overnight. And one day he's a father now. Because now he got to take care of a five-year-old. Now he's mad. Popping the kid upside the head because he don't know how to deal with him or her. You got to watch these children. And, and, and what this th case was going into, they were abusing the kids. Damn. Human sex trafficking. That's what was going on with them. Give me the next one about the woman charged in death. I want you sisters in IUIC to pay close attention to this. And we're going to go to, I want to watch the whole thing. How long is it? How long? I can't hear him. What? Oh, a few minutes. Okay, go ahead. Pay close attention. We are learning new information tonight about what led up to last week's murder of a pastor at Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. Good evening. I'm Richard Ransom. And I'm Katina Rankin. Police reports scanner traffic and friends of Pastor Broads Perry show a scorned mistress from Little Rock drove to Collierville over the man she loved. Local 24 News reporter Rebecca Butcher live with... Uh, tonight's top story. Rebecca, you're reporting there from Collierville. 
Yeah, Katina, well, that's suspect Latasha Daniels. She's expected here in Carville uh, Town Court tomorrow morning. We got a chance to speak today to a friend of the now deceased pastor, uh, Perry. She went to Florida A&M University with him several years ago. She told me that the news today was hard to believe. No, That's a Collierville cop after arriving Thursday night at the Meridian Park Apartments. Executive Pastor Brodus Perry was dying from three gunshot wounds. His wife was shot in the shoulder and Latasha Daniels was holding a gun. We contacted one of Pastor Perry's friends in Florida. I was, you know, re really sad and I was like, not Brodus. I was like, I'm like, he just moved. Like, didn't he just move uh, to a new city? And the couple did just move to Carrieville from Little Rock. That's where Perry's wife now tells police she and her husband knew Daniels from and never suspected an affair until Thursday night. She says as Daniels showed up, had a short visit, began to leave, she grabbed her gun and started firing, shouting, you broke my heart. It appeared that they were... From from what um from what the lady shared that they had a relationship and so I would say healing has to take place um for the, the young lady who um committed the crime and also for the wife. Records show Daniels, a certified anger management specialist, was a member what? of Pastor Perry's. Wait, go back, y'all didn't hear that. Back that thing up. They had a relationship, and so I would say healing has to take place um, for the, the young lady who um, committed the crime and also for the wife. Records show Daniels, a certified anger management specialist, was a member of Pastor Perry's Wait, right church. There. What happened to her management skills? She was a certified anger management, and she lost her freaking mind. Now, this pastor, this is another example of how you can abuse the ways of God. He had a one-time affair with this woman. Give me that in Job 24 and 15. She had one affair with this guy and lost her mind and said, you hurt me and killed him, shot him three times and shot his wife once in the shoulder. You can't make this stuff up. Read that. Job 24 verse 15. The eye also of the adulterer waiteth for the twilight. They wait till it's dark. Real dark. Go ahead. That's saying, the twilight saying what? Saying, no one shall see that me. That doesn't say no one. Come on, man. No, sorry. No eye shall see me and disguises his face. So the pastor says, no eye shall see me and he disguises his face. Meaning what? He put on a hoodie and a, a, a Yankees baseball cap. He put on some shades probably. He borrowed a neighbor's car or his brother's car and went over to the house and said, nobody's going to recognize me, that I'm the pastor of the church. Go ahead. In the dark, they dig through houses. Yeah, they, they choose a house. Hey, meet me in such and such house at this time of night. Go ahead. Which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. They know not the light. The Bible says they know not the light. So, I get, so it's, not, it's not funny. It's sad. What's sad about this case she is an anger management specialist, and he's or was a pastor of a church, abusing the ways of God. And his wife was oblivious to it. Right. So again, brothers, you have to check your, help me out with some nice words so I don't say nothing foul. Check your spirit. I know some of y'all, you camp leaders, you be counseling, counseling some of these sisters, and we tell y'all, let the senior sisters counsel some of them, some of them things. Especially if it's dealing with that feminine stuff or them issues. Let those women deal with that stuff. Okay? Y'all sitting in the room with them and you, it's, it's going to turn out to something like this. And you never know. That thing will backfire on you. You'll be sitting in the congregation and that sister will be crazy as hell and bust a cap in you. Now you want to know how this happened. Because you laid down with the woman. Remember back in the, you know what I'm talking about. There was a sister, this is a year, long time ago. Sister at the camp. Sister at the camp. She seemed like a nice sister. Seemed. All of a sudden, one day, she lost her mind. She would be at camp going, blah, 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 blah. you know what I'm talking about. And it seemed one of the brothers was banging her secretly and opened Pandora's box of Satanhood. And if we have, what is wrong with this? was a good sister. What happened to her? He was quiet. He see her bugging out. He started to do this. And we we at camp like, hey, what's going on? What is going on? You tell them what she did. Tell them what she was doing. 
She be in the camp. She be quiet and all this. <laughs> 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 just, just, like, just like that. Just like that. We might have it on video. I got some video with her in that thing. We can't make this stuff I'm up. I'm telling you. It's so, bad, bro. So the dude was sneaking around banging his sister just like it. Remember at uh, uh, Paulding? Was it Paulding? We told her brother, hey, 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 leave her alone. Yes, yes, she ain't ready. Yes, yes, yes. She was a good sister. Yep. Y'all know what I'm talking about. As soon as he lay with her, his demons interlocked with her demons. And they took residence in her. It was a war of Satan in her head. And she lost her freaking mind. She wrote me an email a couple of days ago. You can't make this stuff up. So, check your sexual proclivities. Is that a word? Did I just make that up? Is that a word? That sounds good. It sounds yeah, good. We're going to okay, keep, it legit. We're gonna keep it legit. keep it legit. <laughs> Go ahead, Alicia. In Little Rock, the two also work together at a nonprofit. And this was such a dramatic um, situation. And for her to find out this information or whatever this lady is saying while her husband is being killed, I could imagine how that, you know, may feel. So, oh. And Daniels is expected here in court tomorrow. That's at All 8 right, o'clock. That's it. That's She's Hey, give me uh, the, ma the uh, mar it says married pastor. Married pastor. Yeah, we're going to go to 745 on this one. 745. That's all I want out of this. So Y'all pay close attention. Now, now, I'm pulling this up to show you examples of way, ways um, how our people abuse the ways of God. And how, like we read in, what was it, Romans, where it says... Um, now, I mean, Timothy, we just read in Timothy, where it said, uh, silly women laden with iniquity. Uh, is this one with women? Yeah, 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 yeah. Pay close attention to this one. Go ahead, play that. Your relationship with God is, is probably stronger than Are you theirs. starting at zero? Start at zero. We're going to 745, Alicia. Come on, stay with me, man. What oh, go ahead, jump, jump ahead, jump ahead, jump ahead, jump ahead, jump ahead. Okay, right there. Let's start there. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the support. Now, let me get into this story. Now, this story is coming out of Brooklyn, New York, one of my favorite places to visit. And it's of this pastor right here, Pastor Millie Morris Freeman, a pastor of Grace Mountaineer Tabernacle Church in Brooklyn Center, who now faces two felony counts of criminal sexual conduct. What did he and do? he faces this because a 28-year-old woman who was in his church came to him and said that she needed prayer she and that she prayer. wanted some spiritual guidance. Spiritual she guidance. said that she looked up to Pastor Freeman as so-called her spiritual father. Spiritual so she went father. to her spiritual father for advice. When she went to him for prayer, he said that they needed a one-on-one -on -one session and that she needed to do a deliverance one -on -one session sessions. pretty much. And during that deliverance session, he gave her some oil to drink and he started laying hands on her and she fell out under the spirit, went unconscious, so to speak. And she said when she woke up that Listen. she felt oil on her breasts and also on her underwear. Pastor oh, Freeman wait, then told the woman... She woke up and fed, or felt oil on her breasts and in her underwear. She said, there's some oil I feel down here. Go ahead. That he anointed all places, but he did not see all places. Stop! He anointed all places, but did not see all. That's like the Apocrypha is in the Bible, but not of the Bible. <laughs> Go ahead. Now, you felt the oil on your breasts. You felt it on your underwear. And you let this man tell you, I anointed all places, but I didn't see all places. And then he told you, we need to have a second deliverance session after uh -oh. Bible study. And of course, Wait, and a like Bible some pause. that Bible study. You ever see, meet these women that say, can I have a, you brothers know, some of y'all know. I like a, you say, go to the school, sis. She, so, she says, no, I want you to teach me. Can you, can we have a personal Bible study? Hoshea, you know what I'm talking about, right? Can we have a personal Bible study? No. No, we can't have a personal Bible study. Because what's going to, like, uh, 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 there's a brother that's going to tell about, uh, 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 Bishop, sister, want to learn the scripture. I said, okay, bring it to the school. No, 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 she want me to teach. I said, she want you to teach. He says, yes, yeah, she want me to teach her. 
He said, I said, well, when are you supposed to do it? I don't agree with this, but when is this supposed to happen? He says, 9 o'clock tonight. I said, who's going to be home? He says, her. I said, he said, don't worry, she's married. I said, oh, she's married too. Is the husband going to be there? No. I said, bro, stop right there. Just stop. You're going to her house when the husband is not home to teach her the Bible. He goes, yes. I said, you got the devil on you. This was years ago. This ain't recent. This is years ago. So next Sabbath, before, no, after class, he comes up. His old simple behind. He goes, uh, uh. I said, Hi, hey, how'd the Bible study go, bro? He says, well, I go to the door, and she, I knock on the door, and she opens the door, and she's in her nightgown. And somehow, the Bible ended up under the bed, and we ended up on top of the bed. I said, get the hell out of here. You got, you're the devil of Bible speaks so. of. You can't make this stuff up. Let's play on. People are in the church. This young lady, she went to the second session at the Bible study, even seeing that her breasts were wet with oil and her underwear were wet with oil. She still went. And Silly during women. this next session, the same thing happened. He gave her some oil to drink. He started praying for her. She fell out in the spirit. And this time when she woke up, her underwear were around her ankle. Her shirt was pulled over her head. And her breasts were exposed. Everything was exposed. And she said that her vagina, her anus, and everything was covered in oil. And the pastor, when she woke up, he Wait was spraying her body. Her vagina and her booty hole and her breasts was covered in oil. He tore her up. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> My booty hole is loose and dripping with oil. What the she hell She woke is this? up and she passed out. He tore <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't oil, I thought. That wasn't oil. Yeah, you're right. That was his oil. Good. <laughs> Body with oil. Now, a lot of people think that I do these stories just to make the church look bad. And really, I do stories like this because I want y'all to wake up. To wake up and to understand that people will use religion, people will use their power, their authority in order to act out their sexual deviant behavior. And trust me, you, this has nothing to do with God. This is this man's perverted nature who says that he is a pastor. Now, I'm going to let you all watch this video and I will be back with the rest of my commentary. And trust me, I will not hold back. A North Metro pastor is accused of sexually assaulting a woman prosecutors say was seeking spiritual guidance. 55-year-old Mealy Freeman is the pastor of Grace Mountaineer Tabernacle Church in Brooklyn Center. He's charged with two counts of third-degree criminal sexual conduct. 5 a Witness News reporter Todd Wilson is live in the newsroom with the criminal complaint. Todd? William Freeman is still in the Hennepin County Jail. At his hearing today, he had his family show up along with several supporters. His time in front of the judge was short, but she had multiple questions for him. Family members of Neely Freeman walk through a skyway. Does anybody want to talk to us about Mr. Freeman? This is the man I asked to talk about. Freeman is accused of sexually assaulting a 26-year-old woman. Alicia, the criminal complaint says the incident happened two separate times on September 20th, 2017. But the authorities didn't get a report until January of this year. In the complaint, the accuser says as part of their faith, parishioners are anointed with oil. Uh -oh. She says Freeman had advised her that she needed deliverance and she needed to see him in a one-on-one -on -one session. Grace Mountaineer Tabernacle is based out of this building in Brooklyn Center. The complaint says the first alleged incident was before Bible study. The woman says Freeman gave her oil to drink and she fell out. She says when she regained consciousness, she had oil all over her body. The second incident was allegedly after Bible study. She says once again, she was given something to drink and fell out and woke up partially undressed. When she claims, he then continued to sexually assault her. I tried to speak with Freeman's family once again. Is that a normal religious practice? Well, Freeman's attorney <laughs> couldn't make it for today's court hearing, so the case was held over till tomorrow. Hey, Live in the newsroom, Todd give me that in James 5.14. Let me show how this guy abused this, this scripture. James 5.14. You, you can't make this stuff up. Read that. James chapter 5 and verse 14. Is any sick among you? The sister says she was sick. She needed help, right? <laughs> Let him call for the elders of the church. She said, you're my spiritual father. I need you. I need your help. Go ahead. And let them pray over him. 
Anointed oh. them. Pray over him. Go ahead. Anointing him with oil. See, he took this to another level. Anointing him with oil. Go ahead. In the name of the Lord. So he anointed her in the name of the Lord. And she woke up dripping wet. Play on now. Play on. Father Witness News. All right, y'all. Let's go in. Now, after this woman was sexually assaulted by Pastor Freeman, she went and told one of her friends and her friends told her, look, that was no deliverance service. This man sexually assaulted you and you need to report it. The woman eventually confronted Pastor Freeman and she recorded their conversation without him knowing. Freeman denied touching the woman's uh, vagina and anus, but he did discuss the deliverance process with her. He admitted he anointed her breasts with oil and told her, we insert things into people and you don't ask what happens during deliverance. You it don't is, go into detail. Yeah, and I hear what deliverance I hear. Can be we insert thing. What do you insert into people with oil, with oil on it? What the hell is this? There's some old pervert freak SH going on here. Yeah, she was anointing him with K. He was anointing her with KY. That was the oil he was using. Go ahead. <laughs> Be very tempting. The woman said at another meeting at the church that a church elder, Pastor Freeman, and Pastor Freeman's wife told her not to report the incident. Wow, because wait a I'm minute. Here, I'm like, the wife is in on it too. You can make this stuff up. Them dollars must have been rolling in real good. Go ahead. Like, man, I feel so sorry for Pastor Freeman's wife and this. I don't feel sorry for his wife because his wife knew. Now, the pastor's wife knew about this incident because she heard the recording that the young woman had. And so did the church elder. He heard the recording, too, where the pastor admitted to some of the uh, some of the stuff that took place during the deliverance service. And even after hearing that, the pastor's wife, as well as the church elder, they still took the pastor's side. And they told the woman, let's, let's come together as a church family. Let's pray about this. No, we're not praying about nothing. That's just another way that many churches, not all, they sweep stuff under the rug. When it comes to extramarital affairs, when it comes to child abuse, when it comes to sexual, uh, sexual assault in the church, when it comes to molestation in the church, they sweep stuff under the rug. Oh, no, for the betterment of the congregation, we shouldn't talk about this. Let's go to God and pray about this. No, the pastor should have went to God before he started spraying oil on this, this woman's vagina, her anus, and her breasts. Where in the scripture does it say that's part of deliverance? And this is another thing. Some of y'all need to stop running in everybody's prayer line, letting everybody lay hands on you and, st and stop believing everybody because they come into town saying, I'm Archbishop this and I'm prophetess this and I got a word for you and I got a word for this. And the Lord told the Lord ain't told you to tell me nothing. <laughs> and see, I'm bold enough to say that. Because some of you all, not all, not everybody, but some people in the church, they're so gullible. They got low self-esteem. And if anybody who has the mic or on the pulpit gives them any kind of attention, you can basically manipulate them to get anything from them. Money. Sex. Anything. Because they just want some attention. Oh, that's a woman of God, or that's my man of oh, God. Oh, just reminds me of another right story here. in uh, New Orleans. I think it was New Orleans or St. Louis. I think it was New Orleans. Remember, there was a couple that came in. Hoshea, you might know what I'm talking about. Couple that came in. Uh, they've been they've been together. You know, common. What is it called? Common law. And the brother said, "Well, y'all supposed to get married." Blah, blah, according to scriptures, get married. And but they kept arguing. So the officer says, I'm going to counsel. They said, the best counsel, y'all need to separate for a while because they was at it like cats and dogs. So the brother, the officer at the time, this was years ago, convinced them to seek, be separated for a while, not to deal with each other no more. This go ties in with this. So weeks go by. The sister uh, is not, she doesn't come to the school for a while. Then all of a sudden, one Sabbath, she comes into the school with him, the officer. And the officer stands up and announces a betrothal. I'm going to marry sister such and such. And the uh, common law husband's sitting there like, what? 
What the hell are you talking about? That's my wife. You told us to be separated so that we can reconcile. Now you're telling everybody you're going to marry her. That's why the scripture says, know what need a man has before you counsel with him. So wickedness does go, don't think it's just there on TV. We've seen it in touches here. And we warn you, brothers. We're warning you, brothers. Give me the next one about the other married pastor. The other, it says married pastor. And we're going to go to 10. Start it. Oh, jump till you get to his picture. We don't need that first part. Jump through it, Alicia. Let me see. Go to one minute. Let me see. Jump. Jump. Right there. Right there. Yeah, we're going to go to 10 minutes. To the Bluefield Police Department. Pastor Apostle Anderson H. Martin II oh, an of Bluefield was indicted on third degree sexual assault and second degree sexual abuse last week by a Mercer County grand jury. Pastor Martin is the pastor of Greater Tabernacle Faith Apostolic Church. Now, according to the Bluefield Police Department, Detective Sergeant K.L. Adams said that the male victim is 25 years old. Uh -oh, wait, However, he has Did y'all miss that? It said the male victim is 25 years old. Now, you might say this, uh, well, all right, they homos, but isn't that consensual? Well, let's play on and see. Mental capacity of a 10 go to 12 Go back, they missed old. it. Go back, go back. Detective Sergeant K.L. Adams said that the male victim is 25 years old. However, he has the mental capacity of a 10 to 12 year old. Wow. Yes. Really, Pastor? Now, the incident involving the charges occurred when the defendant picked the victim up at his residence to so-called take him out, according to the criminal complaint. Uh, the victim and his family thought that the pastor was taking the man to play video games or to go shopping. Instead, Pastor Martin took the victim to his residence where he... Well, I'm not going to even say what Pastor Martin did when the victim came to his residence. I'm going to let Pastor Martin tell you what he did in these news clippings. And you all let me know down in the comment section if you believe him or not. And I'm coming back with the rest of my commentary. Anderson H. Martin II is the pastor of Greater Tabernacle of Faith Apostolic Church. And he's been ordered to appear in circuit court on Monday. Court documents say Martin faces charges of sexual assault in the third degree sexual abuse in the second degree this for an incident involving a 25 year old man martin shared his thoughts on the situation with our jennifer roberts as did some neighbors i was shocked very shocked i think it's sad i didn't know it was that close court documents state martin committed sexual assault by unlawfully engaging in sexual intercourse and oral intercourse with a man described as physically helpless due to mental illness martin rolled up on me today at the church denying the charges whether uh, something was done to the individual uh, i can't say who did it all i know is i know i didn't do it is there any truth in any of these complaints did you do anything that's written in any of this paperwork no there's no truth yes uh, I invited him to my home to take a bath. My wife is there with me. Pause. Stop. 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 You got to turn it up, Alicia. He said he invited the individual to his house to take a bath. He told the boy's parents, I'm going to take him to play video games and shopping. Play on. Take a shot. Yes, but did I physically put my hands on him? The only time that I'll say this part right here, the only times that I put my hands on him was hit his hair on the ground. And I give I edged him up, edged him up. Stop, my... stop, stop. See, sometimes people tell on themselves. They ask him, did you touch the young man? He says no. He says, then he says, but the only time I did touch him is to give him an edge up or the haircut. So you did touch him. The answer is yes, you touched him, but let's play on. I raised him, that was because I didn't want him to cut himself because I used to scrape ropes. The neighbors say the situation puts a dim light on the community, but they hope to see brighter days soon. Praying for everybody that was involved. Everybody. I mean, such a sad story, but we'll know 
every day when the truth come out. Here for you in Bluefield, Jennifer Roberts, WVVA News. Martin is expected to appear in front of Judge William Sadler on Monday in circuit court for his arraignment. Meanwhile, so, a local pastor is charged with sexual assault of a mentally disabled man. 59 News reporter Caroline Forback confronted the man about the allegations against him. Pastor Anderson Martin denies allegations that he sexually assaulted a disabled person. No wrong whatsoever. If, if I've done some wrong, it could be that I tried to be a more loving, caring pastor. Anderson Martin was indicted on sexual assault and sexual abuse charges by a Mercer County grand jury last week. The victim is 25 but has the mental capacity of a 10 to 12 year old. He told officers Martin took him to his home, undressed and showered him. While in the shower, the victim says Martin asked for inappropriate favors. When he came home, he had different clothes on and everything else. And first thing I asked him, did something happen? He said yes. And I listened to what he had to say and I called the cops. Documents state a sexual assault kit revealed the victim was sexually abused. I found Martin at the church where he would interact with the victim on a weekly basis and asked him his response to the possibility of physical evidence against him. Now, whether uh, something was done to the individual, uh, I can't say who did it. All I know is I know I didn't do it. Martin calls himself a man of God and claims he was only wait, trying to wait, help. Wait, stop. And one of the things you got to notice is his composure. He actually he supposedly has a, a relationship. I'm talking about a friend, like a friendship for the young man. He's taking him video, uh, play video games and shopping. Now they tell him, hey, did you know this young man was abused? Now, if you've been known to take this young man, you'd be, what? You got, look, his, well, I, I, I don't know who did it, but I can say this thing. It wasn't me. Then his whole composure is wrong. You got to read spirits. Something ain't right. Go ahead. The victim. He denies acting inappropriately. I have invited him to my home to take a bath. My wife was there with me. To take Pause. The bath, to take Notice a he says, my wife was there with me. Stop. And this, this is a smokescreen for bull crap. My wife was there with me. And if she was, she's the devil too that the Bible speaks of. No concern about who did it. All right. No concern at all. Go ahead. Yes, but did I physically put my hands on him? The only time that I'll say this part right here, the only time that I put my hands on him was he his hair overgrown. And I give I itched him up, itched him up. My, my race, and that was because I didn't want him to cut himself. The victim's caretaker tells us he attended Martin's service at the Greater Tabernacle of Faith Apostolic Church in Bluefield every Sunday. The victim's caretaker wants to see Martin behind bars. He put his, uh, his trust in him so much, and then he turned around and did that to him. Uh, you know, I want to see him go to jail. Reporting in Mercer County, Caroline Forback, 59 News. That was those. Are all right, y'all. Let's go in now. First of pause all, pause for a second. Pause for a second. Those are two different news channels that interviewed him, and you notice his his answer sounded exactly the same. He talked about that he gave him the edge up and all of that, and he said to keep him from cutting himself, and he said it the exact same way that he said to the first camera. He rehearsed it. Go ahead. Before we go in, I just wanted to say to the neighbors, they were tripping me out. The ones who were like, oh, I think this is sad. And the other one was like at the barbershop, you know, I didn't know it was this close. <laughs> and then the lady at the end who was like, you know, I just pray. I just pray. It is so funny to me because that's the common response from a lot of people whenever there's any type of sexual molestation, any type of situation where the pastor has uh, done anything like adultery or anything in the church, not only with pastors, with hey, leaders. Pause it. Oh, Give me a uh, wisdom of Solomon 4 and 12. This is Christianity. This is what Christianity. Hold it right there. Let's, we're going to come right back to this. We're going to go to 10 minutes. Read that. 4 and 12. Wisdom of Solomon 4 verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness. For the bewitching of naughtiness, meaning sin. Go ahead. Doth obscure things that are honest. It obscures things that are honest. When we read the Bible, the Bible is an honest book. God's laws are honest. It says, doth obscure things that are honest. 
It makes it cloudy. It makes it fuzzy. You're not certain anymore. Go ahead. And the wandering of concupiscence, meaning sexual sins, doth undermine the simple mind. Like this guy right here. This is the simple mind right here. It undermined him. Because our people will have the Bible in their hand, they will read it, and then they will choose to ignore it, what is written. Play on. With anybody in religious institutions, it's always, you know, we didn't know it was happening, we're going to pray. But see, we're in a day now that not only are we going to pray, we're going to prosecute the people who did these acts on the victims. That's where we are now. And I know a lot of you all get mad and you're in the comments and how do you know? And oh, it's an attack on this person. No, this is not an attack on anybody. What's happening now in the universe is that all these cases from, from years and decades ago, people have been raped and molested and victimized in religious institutions and now all of it is just coming to a head and we are faced with those victims many who are now in their 60s 70s some are in their 80s and some are our age and you know in their 30s and maybe in the 20s and stuff like that and people are speaking out this is not the generation where we are going to sit back and run around the church and say pray and let god handle it nope we got power, authority, and dominion to handle those things here on the earth, and it's high time that we start exercising it. Now, let's get into this. Now, according to the criminal complaint, and you all heard Pastor Martin say in the news clipping that he uh, showed the man how to wash his body. That's why he invited him over to the house. He wanted to show him how to shower. He wanted to show him how to wash every part of his body, including his genitals. But Martin denied <laughs> ever touching the man. Now, uh, according to the sexual assault examination that was performed on the victim, it showed signs of penetration. Wow. During the uh, police investigation, um, the detective Sergeant Adams stated that he and other members of the Bluefield Department were called to the victim's guardian's house because the guardian that you all saw on that video, once he called the police, I guess the police, they weren't coming fast enough. And he got a bat and he started walking towards uh, Pastor Martin's church because he was going to fight Pastor. Well, he was going to knock him out with that bat. Now, when I first heard this, I was like, well, you know, you know, that's the guardian, that's the caregiver. And then when I was reading more into it and I heard Pastor Martin's um, uh, video clip right there, it made me think, Pastor Martin, you are a pastor, a married pastor. As you stated in that video, your wife was home when you told the man to take a shower. Here's my thing to you, Pastor Martin. Why would you as a man go to another uh, man who is mentally disabled, go to his home, his, he already has a home. Why are you picking this man up to show him how to wash himself? That made you look so guilty. If I was you, I would have just went in that church and shut the door. I wouldn't have even done this interview because you're telling me that you told this victim's caregiver and family members that you were taking him to play video games and to go shopping. Pastor want to go shopping. Pastor, see, Pastor taking all the money going shopping. And he was going to do a good deed. But some kind of way between going to play video games and shopping with this 25-year-old mentally disabled man, you made a detour to your home to show him how to take a shower. Pastor, that is the silliest thing I ever heard. That's why the grand jury. So, you know, uh, look at Romans 7, verse 7 for me a moment. Romans 7, verse 7. Oh, you know what? I like Mark 721 better. I like that one better. Mark 721. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. We got to be aware uh, what's in. This is why it's another scripture where it says about Christ. He did not commit himself to any man because he knew what was in man. And what is in man is what we're reading here in Mark 7, 21. Read that again. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adultery. Adultery. Fornications. Oh, that's sexual sins right there. Murders. Murders. Thefts. Thefts. Covetousness. Covetousness. Mm -hmm. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Deceit. Lasciviousness. And you know what? You got to, to uh, just like adultery is playing, like we read in Job uh, 24, you got to plot and plan. Adultery don't just happen by accident. You have to plot it and plan it. 
Like it says, they dig through houses in the night that they uh, picked out during the day. Likewise with situations like this. You're going to tell, uh, Scout, you got to tell what the family, oh, I want to take them shopping, get them some clothes. Get your yeah, get your lives together. And to plot and plan, okay, I'm going to do, do a detour to my house. And I'm going to teach you how to wash your balls. What the hell is this? Right. He even planned this part. Exactly. The man said you should have just stayed inside to close the door, but you come out because you think your, your, you think your, your scheme is foolproof. You get out here and you say this stuff. Exactly. Did you finish that? Also? No, sir. Thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. So we got to be able, that's what defiles us. All those wicked things that was in our mind, those things defile us. Go back to 2 Ezra chapter 9 for me, please. And you in verse uh, 9. 2 Ezra chapter 9 and verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my ways. Uh -huh. and they abusing God's ways. You got the scriptures. You know the scriptures. But you choose to abuse God's ways. Go ahead. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. The prophecy says you're going to dwell in torments. That's what Revelation 14, 9 down through 11 is saying about torments. Dwelling in torments. Go ahead. For such as in their life have received benefits. For such as in their life have received benefits. Go ahead. And have not known me. Now, we want to deal with the people in this life who have received benefits. Who have received benefits. Give me the next video about the Supreme Court ruling. Because Black Lives Matter was supposed to receive a benefit for black people. Isn't that what Black Lives Matter is supposed to be about? Benefits for black people. Just like the Civil Rights Bill was to be a bill for black people. You got it for me, Alicia? Go ahead, play that. The Supreme Court has issued an historic ruling many supporters are calling a win for the LGBTQ community and makes it illegal. Turn it up so we can hear it. We, it's always, we can barely hear it. Don't, go back to the beginning. Go back to the beginning again. So, now this is all in the midst of Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. They're going to court, they're going to court. And the only ones who get a benefit is the LGBT community. Play that. The Supreme Court has issued an historic ruling many supporters are calling a win for the LGBTQ community and makes it illegal for an employer to discriminate against an employee based on their sexual orientation or gender identity. Our Abby Larico shows us how this ruling has a big impact right here in Missouri. It's been illegal to discriminate on the basis of sex since 1964. See Title VII of the Civil Rights Act. But until now, it was unclear if that also meant sexual orientation or gender identification, the LGBTQ community. I think it's surprising to a lot of people because of the strides that the LGBTQ community has made. We sometimes take that for granted. Um, and certainly we know that employment discrimination um, is something that happens regularly within our community. In a 6-3 to three vote, the Supreme Court decided LGBTQ employees are protected. In the majority opinion, Justice Neil Gorsuch wrote, quote, an employer who fired an individual for being homosexual or transgender fires that person for traits or actions it would not have questioned in members of a different sex. While some states have made their own employee anti-discrimination laws in the past, most haven't. That includes Missouri meaning you could legally fire someone for being gay, queer, or transgender until today. The Missouri Non-Discrimination Act, or MONA, has been filed 22 consecutive years. Um, so I certainly think it's safe to say that Missouri lawmakers could have enacted these many years ago. Pause MONA it for a second. Pause it for a second. Pause it for a second. They, there was a section in here where they said that employers could not uh, terminate or fire the same sex person for um, for the traits that you will find in a female. Back it up just a little bit. I'm trying to get my words together. Back it up a little bit because they made it about the case. Back it up just a little bit where you get what when about that employer. I got to look at this screen, right? Today. The Missouri Non-Discrimination Act, or MONA, has been filed 22 consecutive years. Um, so I certainly think it's safe to say that Missouri lawmakers could have enacted these 
many years ago. Mona would also outlaw discrimination in housing and public accommodation. I think people can take a moment to celebrate this win and still recognize the work that we have to do. The Trump administration had opposed this. The Justice Department sent the Supreme Court a brief urging them not to include LGBTQ people in their interpretation of the Civil Rights Act. This landmark historic... Go back earlier. Let me see. There was a part in there where they said traits, that the word traits was up there. You're going too far up. Go back. Go back. All right. Let's see from right there. Let's see what happens. Sexual orientation or gender identification, the LGBTQ community. I think it's surprising to a lot of people because of the strides that the LGBTQ community has made. We sometimes take that for granted. Um, And certainly we know that employment discrimination um, is something that happens regularly within our community. In a six to three vote, the Supreme Court decided LGBTQ employees are protected. In the majority opinion, Justice Neil Gorsuch wrote, quote, an employer who fired an individual for being homosexual or transgender fires that person for traits or actions it would not have questioned in members of a different sex. Stop. Some... You heard what he said? I want to see the words. Back. To, I need to look at the words. Right there. An employee who fires an employer who fires an individual for being homosexual or transgender fires that person. Go ahead, the next piece. That person for traits or actions. That would part not right there, question. freeze it. For traits or actions, it would have not questioned in members of a different sex. When you have a woman, th- the traits that she's going to have to attract the man, those are traits that you would expect from a woman. So that's what they're saying here. But the, the, the traits of a man ain't supposed to be that of a woman. So if he's going after you for the same thing that a woman would, would go after you for and you fire him, now you got problems. So in other words, in other words, you would have to allow the man that's trying to chase you, you'd have to allow that. Because you said that, I, well, why would you allow the female to do it? Because she's a female, that's why. That would be the obvious answer. Well, you discriminating because he feels like he's a female. So you got to let him do it too. You see how sick this thing is? Play on. In members of a different sex. While some states have made their own employee anti-discrimination laws in the past, most haven't. That includes Missouri, meaning you could legally fire someone for being gay, queer, or transgender until today. The Missouri Non-Discrimination Act, or MONA, has been filed 22 consecutive years. Um, So I certainly think it's safe to say that Missouri lawmakers could have enacted these many years ago. MONA would also outlaw discrimination in housing. Now, you notice, y'all see in the background, the rainbow flag. That, they have perverted the Bible. This, like when Daniel 7.25 talks about uh, changing times and laws and speaking great, speaking great things against the Most High, this is an example right here. The rainbow was a covenant between the earth, God and the earth, that he would not destroy with water anymore. They took that and said, let's make it for LGBTQRSTUV society. You can't make this stuff up. So when you see a rainbow, your mind is supposed to think on the covenant that the Most High made with Abraham about about the flood. That's what you're supposed to say. That's what you're supposed to think. They have taken that, taken the symbol of the Most High, and every time you see that biblical symbol, you don't think about what the scriptures say. You think about some LGBTQ and all the rest of the alphabets. Hey, Zeph, what's that hat? Where's Captain Zephaniah? What's that hat you got that you be wearing that I hate that damn hat? That's the Denver Nuggets. They use the damn rainbow. He got a hat for the Denver Nuggets with a rainbow. Any, we, where was we at? Where was we at? He put Where? On a damn quest. And the Edomites was chasing him around the boat. I said, right. take the damn hat off. He told his wife, hold my hand. Hold right. my hand. Don't let go. Right, right. <laughs> Stop wearing that damn hat. But you would think, people, you wouldn't see it. You go, Right, you said, that's the covenant of the most high. But that ain't what pops in people's minds. Zeph, you took a, you, 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 <laughs> you took a chance. What happened with the lights? You took a chance. It's the LGBTQ community. I'm mad as hell. 
Play on. Zephyr trying to bring this power back. I dig it. I think people can take a moment to celebrate this win and still recognize the work that we have to do. The Trump administration had opposed this. The Justice Department sent the Supreme Court a brief urging them not to include LGBTQ people in their interpretation of the Civil Rights Act. This landmark historic ruling comes right in the middle of Pride Month. Abby Larico, five on your side. So. A St. Louis uh, County. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Play, Play on. County police lieutenant who won a $20 million discrimination lawsuit against the department says he's somewhat surprised by the decision from the conservative leaning high court. Keith Wildhaber sued the county back in 2017, claiming he was denied a promotion because he is gay. Missouri is one of the states where that kind of discrimination is legal. His attorneys argue discrimination based on gender stereotyping to win. When you stop and think that fewer than half the states in our nation protect uh, gay rights in the, in the workplace, and now it's the law of the land, it's a, uh, it, it's a pretty monumental uh, moment. Wildhaber is now the commander of the St. Louis County Police Department's Diversity and Inclusion Unit. Yeah, force that. That was yeah, it, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're telling you that that's the American dream, bro. They come with a price. Then that's the downfall of America right there. That's what the Lord is telling us, you understand? You think about a great country as America, promote something like that. That means the whole world going to follow that thing. There's the destruction of the white men right there. Exactly. So we just read about such an in life received benefits. Now, black people thought they was going to get benefits. The only benefit that came out of all this madness is the LGBT community. And black people have not figured that thing out yet. They hijacked the protesting, took it over, and got more legislation for their behalf. Even the month of June, Juneteenth, we're supposed to be the emancipation of black people. They said June is the month for gay pride. This is what white people do. They are the devil the Bible speaks of. Understand when I say that. So now black people, we went, not we, well our people went to court looking for benefits. Give me uh, Republican Matt Gates. He went to court looking for benefits. And the only benefits, wait, wait, before we get that, before we get that, the only benefits was the Sodom agenda. Give me the Isaiah 28 and 14. Isaiah 28, 14. Isaiah 28, verse 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Uh huh. Talk about Be- the leaders of black society. When it talks about um, ye scornful men that rule this people, it's the black leaders, black and Latino leadership. Go ahead. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. Our people made a covenant with the so called white men. That's death. Go ahead. And with hell are we at agreement. And they're at agreement with the low uh, living situations of so called black and brown people. They don't mind that. They don't speak against that. Go ahead. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through. I mean, when destruction comes, go ahead. It shall not come unto us. These leaders say it shall not come unto us. Why? Go ahead. For we have made lies our refuge. Because they, be- they talk lies, they believe their lies. Go ahead. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And under falsehood have they hid themselves. Now these black leaders, get John eleven forty seven. Remember, they got these high pollutant positions based on their agreement with white society, with the United States of America. During the time of Christ, it was with Rome. Read that. We've read this many times. John chapter 11 and verse 47. Uh-huh. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and Watch said, this. What do we? What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. This man who everyone calls Christ is doing many miracles. Go ahead. If we let him thus alone. If we don't do something about him and his teachings. All men will believe on him. Everybody's going to believe. All the Israelites is going to follow this guy. Go ahead. And the Romans. And the white man. Shall come and take away both our place and nation. Shall come and take away both our place. Meaning our high seats of authority. And our nation. So they, uh, they understood that they made an agreement with death and hell back then. It is no difference today. So now, right, they're going to come against, just like they came against Christ and the disciples. Watch Black Lives Matter be used to come against 
the prophets of God. They're going to put black people in the front to go, go against them. That way you can't say it's racist. You can't say it's white against black. They're going to find black women and wicked black men to go against the word of God. Just watch. Now, this brother here was looking for some benefits. With all the hell, the chaos within the past few weeks, he goes to court for benefits. Watch the video. You all are white males. You never lived in my shoes, and you do not know what it's like to be an African-American male. Who in the hell do the you think you are? Wait a minute. Stop. The white men say, who in the hell do you think you are talking to white people like that? You can't make this stuff up. This guy is a... a, a Go back to the beginning. I just like that part. And go on. Go ahead. Males, you never lived in my shoes, and you do not know what it's like to be an African-American male. Who in the hell do you think you are? This hearing blew up when a rep called out his colleague's bias. Mr. Chairman, let me just start by saying I am absolutely sitting here offended and angry as hell. And I want to explain to my, what we always say is, how we refer to each other, my good friends on the other side. By the time I'm finished, you will be clear that we are not good friends. Uh Uh-oh. As a black male who went to the fifth best public high school in the country, who was a victim of excessive force, who has a black son, who has worries that you all don't, And to my colleagues, especially the ones that keep introducing amendments that are a tangent and a distraction from what we're talking about, you all are white males. You never lived in my shoes, and you do not know what it's like to be an African-American male. And all I'm saying is, if you are opposed to this legislation, let's just have the vote. But please do not come in this committee room and make a mockery of the pain that exists in my community. And it reminds me of the argument about the 1964 Voting uh, Civil Rights Act or the 65 Voting Rights Act, where 126 people voted against a Civil Rights Act, 85 people against a Voting Rights Act, because they had all these side issues. Either man up and say you don't believe in it, or let's talk about the real issue. And yes, we're not interested in watered-down version of this bill. I'm not interested in equality with all deliberate speed. This is a crisis. People are losing their lives. So if we have other things that we want to fix, then fix them in another bill, fix them at another time. But people are dying as we talk. So I am not interested and moving at a snail's pace. I am not interested in a watered-down bill that mandates nothing. I'm not interested in studying Antifa. I'm not even interested in studying the Klan or sovereign citizens right now because that is not the imminent threat that black men face on a daily basis. And right now, too often, it is law enforcement. Those who were sworn to protect and to serve And so all we're asking today is to deal with that. I don't mind dealing with other pieces of legislation. I don't mind dealing with other issues that you all may have. And and what I don't want to leave this conversation with and why I'm speaking now instead of later is because I don't want you all to leave here saying, well, we didn't know. We didn't know that's how you felt, Cedric. I want it to be crystal clear. And I will give you the benefit of the doubt that it is an unconscious bias that I'm hearing. Because at worst, it's conscious bias. And that I would hate to assume from any of the people on the other side. Will the gentleman yield? Sure. I appreciate your passion. Are you suggesting that you're certain that none of us have non-white children? Be- because you, you reflected on your black son and you Wait, said none of us Wait, stop. Hear this, He's not even talking about that. This is, they all, they, what does that throw dust in the air? Right. He derailed right. Whole, he derailed whole that's what they, that's what white folks do. And this is what he said. They move at a snail's pace regarding the, 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 the death of young black men. And then when you press them on it, 
They got other writings of like, let's deal with this over here before we deal with what you're bringing up. Now he's going to change the channel on him. Right. Thank you. Go ahead. Man, man, stop. I'm not about to get sidetracked about the color of our children. We're talking about black kids. I reclaim my time. You said that I reclaimed my time. I know. You want the discussion? I know that gentlemen, you want a bill? gentlemen reclaimed his time. I said I claim reclaimed my time. I already know that there are people on the other side that have uh, black grandchildren. It is not about the color of your kids. It is about black males, black people in the streets How do that you are getting killed. And if one of them happens to be your kid, I'm concerned about him too. And clearly, I'm more concerned about him than you are. So, so let's be clear you're, about you're that. Claiming, so you're claiming you're I more am, concerned for my family than I do? Who in the hell do the you gentlemen, think you are? The gentlemen, if the, the shoe gentlemen, fits. Listen, you don't know how much we care about will families. Suspend, kick dog outrageous. holler. You should take those words down. I just, wait, go back. I missed what he said about the, the holler. Go back a little bit. Who in the heck? Go ahead. Play. And clearly, I'm more concerned about him than you are. So let's be clear you're, about you're that. Claiming, so you're claiming you're I more am, concerned for my family than I do? Who in the hell do the you gentlemen, think you are? The gentlemen, if the, the shoe gentlemen, fits. Listen, you don't know how much we care about will families. Suspend, kick this dog is you should take those words down. The I don't care will about your family and love your family. The gentleman so will suspend. It. The gentleman will suspend. The time belongs to the gentleman from Louisiana. Cedric, would you yield? Was, was that a nerve? Yeah, uh, you did. Yeah, oh. The gentleman from Louisiana. I say this. Honestly, I appreciate you yielding. You are my good friend, and we hail from the same state, and I respect you, and I love you. And I, I, I say this honestly. If all that you said is true, and I believe it is, then why didn't the Democrats allow us to assist with this? Why draft a bill in the dark of night in a back room somewhere and then present it to us whole cloth? If you really wanted us to work together, and we want to, why not give us that opportunity? Do you have an answer for that? You know, I do have an answer for that. Because you all were in charge for a while. We've been in charge for a while. I have been singing this same song since 1991. People on the streets right now are demanding action right now. We saw what was just presented in the Senate. It was a watered down bill. And right now, this is a national crisis. And we don't want to move with all deliberate speed. So those ideas that are good, we are willing to meet and to talk about. And the author of the bill, Ms. Bass, Congresswoman Bass has indicated willingness to continue to work as we go forward. But as of right now, this is a critical emergency for people in this country. And I just think that we should not debate everything from Flynn to all this other stuff. We know what we're talking about. In the time of the Let's vote it up or down. Time of the gentleman has expired. Well, all righty then. All right. Now, he went there for some benefits for black people. Black people... Only one who gets benefits in the society, if you're, if you're black and you're gay, yeah. then you got some benefits right, there. Right, right. The LGBT, QRST, right. they get benefits. Right. Wow. So they held, hijacked this whole black matters garbage. That's what they did. That's what they do. Now, give me my good friend, Arkansas Senator Flowers. And don't let me forget about black lives matter what we believe. I got to bring that out. Oh, this is my friend right here. Go ahead. I'll be as quick as I can, as quick as it takes to kill somebody, I guess. You want me to be that quick. But, you know, as uh, Ms. Fletcher pointed out, and it doesn't take much to look on the local news every night and see how many black kids, black boys, black men are being killed with these stand-your-ground defenses that these people raise, then they get off. So I take issue with that. I'm the only person here of color, okay? I am a mother, too. And I have a son. And I care as much for my son as y'all care for y'alls. But my son doesn't walk the same path as yours does. So this debate deserves more time. I'm in Pine Bluff. We have killings regularly down there. Mr. Hunter knows he's our prosecutor. Now, I don't know where the heck, I know where you are from, Gary. And I don't know really where Mr. Ballinger is from. But I can tell you that for a long time since I've been back here in Arkansas, I have feared for my son's life. 
Now he's 27 and he's out of Arkansas. And I thank God he is when you're bringing up crap like this. It offends me. And then to limit the debate too. This is crazy. You don't have to worry about your children, Will. I worry about my son. And I worry about other little black boys and girls. And people coming into my neighborhood, into my city, saying they got open carry rights, walking down in front of my doggone office in front of the courthouse. That's a bully. Do I have a right to stand my ground with some crazy ass person walking around with a doggone gun? I don't know what the hell he intends to do. But I know I am scared. I feel threatened. Just like some of y'all walking around here up in the legislature with these damn guns. That What's his name? Garner came in here walking around here with a damn gun in his, under his coat. You can see the damn print. Senator, you need to stop. Talking. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. What the hell are you going to do? Shoot me? Senator. Senator, shit. The hell? I'm telling you, this deserves more attention. You want to come up here with all these little uh, NRA bills and bills that Alec have and all that stuff. I'm talking about my son's life. And I'm talking about the lives of other black kids. Do what the hell you want to do. Go ahead, but you can't silence me. You got your damn silence gun out in the damn chamber today, but you are not going to silence me. Senator Flowers, if anybody hasn't tried to silence you, it's me. To win. To win. We need to get this over with. He said we were going to be down here all night. You got all these people up here. NAACP is here too. Let them speak. I'm going to limit some damn debate. Senator. What? You're out of order. And so what? So you're out of order. Okay, so what? You're out of order. And so what are you going to do about it? I am upset. You need to be upset somewhere else. No, I don't. I, just, I got a right. I'm an elected officer just like you. Now, that's my friend right there. All praise to the Lord. Let's give her right. <laughs> But y'all, stop. We always looking for benefits. Hey, put that thing up uh, Ben Zion just sent me. It's a white fragility. That's what it is. They, 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 they don't want to deal with the issues, and they always sidestep stuff, yep. deflecting. Right? Read that. Blow it up bigger than that. White, can't even see that. white fragility, discomfort, and defensiveness on the part of a white person when confronted by information about racial inequality and injustice. Her indignant reaction comes off as the quintessential combination of white fragility and white privilege. There you go, right there. So. What I'm showing you is that even with all this chaos in the streets, we looking for benefits and black people don't get none. The, if you join with Esau and that madness, that filthy, uh, uh, what is it? LGBTQ. Then you get some benefits. Hey, go to Black Lives Matter, what they believe. Go to that thing, what they believe. I got, I, it just, it dawned on me. Well, actually, we were talking about it some time ago. Let me show y'all something. Black Lives Matter, what they believe. Yeah, look it up. Look it up. Just type it in on Google. Black Lives Matter. Yeah. When you go to their website, it's going to pop up what they believe. Go ahead. Go to there. You click it. Oh, what we believe is right there. Go back. You see what we believe? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Now, open it up so we can see it on the screen. Well, now you see the large font. We're not reading all this, Liam. Oh, hell no. Come on, raise this thing up. <laughs> big font, big font, little font. The devil is in the details. Now go on down. Go on down. Because you know they added some stuff to this since last week. 
a whole lot of fluff. Wait, wait, not so fast. Mm, okay, go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, start there. We make. We make. We make space for transgender brothers and sisters to participate and lead. We are self-reflexive and do the work required to dismantle cisgender privilege and uplift black trans folk. Transsexuals, got Especially black trans women who continue to be disproportionately impacted by trans antagonistic violence. And you know what? The scripture that we often pull in Deuteronomy 22 verse 5, you know what that's real? Although, brothers, we use it to get on women about pants, it's talking about, as a, the whole verse, woman shouldn't dress like man, man shouldn't dress like woman. That's cross-dressing. Cro- ah, cross-dressing. Cross dre- and cross dressing. and uh, that goes into, I always get them mixed up, the one that don't cut their body parts off is called what? Is it transvestite or transgender? I always get them mixed up. The transvestite does not cut the body parts off. So it's a man dressed as a woman. Right. Or a woman dressed as a man. Okay, thank you, Elrad. Thank you. Read on. That's what the verse is talking about. Go ahead. We build a space that affirms black woman and is free from sexism, misogyny, and environments in which men are centered. Yeah, they don't want men, be, they don't want men ruling the house. We misogyny is hatred against women. Go ahead. We practice empathy. We feel for you. Go ahead. We engage comrades with the intent to learn about and connect with their context. We make our spaces family friendly and enable parents to, f- to fully participate with the children. Watch this. We dismantle the patriarchal practice. Patriarchal means father's role. We dismantle the father's practice. That's what it's saying. We dismantle the father's practice. Go ahead. That requires mothers to work double shifts. You know what? That had confused me for weeks. Then it dawned on me. If you do away with the father's role, how does the mother work double shifts? She not only plays the role of the mother, she plays the role of the father. Mm. That's what that's talking about. These people are the devil the Bible speak of. Go ahead. So that they can mother. And they write it so confusing. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, what the hell are they saying? Exactly. Go ahead. So that they can mother in private even as they participate in public justice work. Yeah. Do their motherly roles and then deal with marching on the street. Go ahead. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement. Meaning father, mother, children. They disrupt that. Go ahead. By supporting each other as extended families in villages. So who, who 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 are they supporting? It's not the fathers, because the fathers have been put out from the from the uh the paragraph above. So it's all women. Go ahead. That collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. When it says parents, right, notice the parents there is mothers and mothers, which goes back up to double shifts. Mm. It ain't talking about because you see parents, you think mother, father. No, that's not what they're talking about. Go ahead. We foster a queer affirm, affirming network. When we gather, we do so with the intention of freeing ourselves with the t- tight grip of heteronormative thinking. Heteronormative thinking. Heterosexual thinking. They want to free themselves from that. Go ahead. Or rather the belief that all in the world are heterosexual unless she or he or they disclose otherwise. Go ahead. We cultivate an intergenerational and communal network free from ageism. Now that word free ageism right there, that confused the, I said ageism. Ageism, hey, hold that, Alicia, not Alicia, yeah, Alicia. Get, I'll put it on the, the page. Go to the, it's called OU, OU, uh, where is it? It's OU something. Hold, put that down. Go, go, find it. I think it's at the bottom. Go to the bottom. Go to the bottom. What's that? There's, I, I want something that says, oh, how do you spell this thing? It says O-U-E website. Hold on. I got to find it. Hold on. Where is it at? Watch. Yes, that's it right there. Can you blow it up big? Put it on the screen. O-U-Daily. 
tolerance, no, no ex oh. right. No excuse for exploitation of children. Now, wait a minute. I got to make sure I get the right paragraph. Oh. Go down, go down. Scroll down, scroll down. I'm looking for something particular under ageism. Ageism. Hey, 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 okay. See that under NAMBLA? NAMBLA stands for North American Man Boy Love Association. Start from there, Officer Liam. N NAMBLA cites pedest pederasty as a freedom issue. Their website advocates ending the oppression of men and boys in mutually consensual relationships. In their lingo, to prohibit man-boy sex. Boy sex is sexual pre prejudice and oppression. Watch the next sentence. That's Here it goes. Ageism, to tell a boy he can't let a man sodomize him is ageism. Do y'all see that? That's what they was talking so about on the Black Lives Matter thing. So Black Lives Matter is about Mambla or Nambla, whatever the however that's right. pronounced. Wicked as That's what they're hell. doing. So that's what all the black dollars is about. Go back to the screen. Yeah, put it back up there. Read that sentence again. To tell a boy he can't let a man sodomize him is ageism. Apparently, we have been depriving pre Prebubescent. Yeah, prebubescent boys of their sexual freedom. See that? Sex that's what we have look Black at the Lives words Matter that they use, about. Bishop, Bishop. They use the word you're depriving him. Right. Deprive. Mm. You're depriving him of sick mentality. Yes. That's what they're saying. You are free to be sick. That's exactly. what they're saying. This place is about to turn into damn Ugh. if we thought Solomon Gomorrah was bad, we we ain't seen nothing yet. They're going to open up more laws in this country. Watch. They're going to push it through Africa and Europe. That's why all the countries are saying black lives matter. They want to push this thing all over. Y'all got nothing to say about that? The floodgates are opening. That's what this is. Floodgates are opening. That's why um, I mentioned earlier, I said before how... And um, a camp that Esau is using black bodies as a platform to push their agenda. This is the fourth wave of feminism, the fourth wave. Okay? And, and, and feminism goes back to lesbianism. Homosexuality and pedophilia have always gone hand in hand in Greece and Rome. America is an extension of both. So America is pretty much going back to her roots again. It's going right back to her roots of being back into homosexuality being the norm, pedophilia being the norm. Bestiality is also going to fall into that also. You know, homosexuals say love is love. Right. But, they, but homosexuals are against pedophilia. But the same excuse to be used by them. Well, you say love is love. I love little boys. Right. So it's going to be confusion all over the place. You understand? So it's, it's all, it's going it's to backfire on them. Because they always push that love is love stuff. When a man comes along saying, I want to have sex with a little boy, they're going to use the same argument. Right. Love is love. Yep. It's madness. Yeah. Um... I'm trying, give me Isaiah 1 and 9. Let me just start it with that. Isaiah 1 and 9. Because I'm, I'm, I'm listening and I'm grasping. I'm not grasping the moment. <laughs> I'm grasping what's been put out over the Black Lives Matter, uh, their mission statement in terms of what they really want. And as we can see, as we were reading, you see that every sentence is about getting rid of the man. Y'all see that? They say they dismantle patriarch families, nuclear families and all that. They want to get rid of the man. Then I'm looking, then I'm paying attention to the other videos that we looked at where you had the black man that was in court, that was in the whatever that was, and he's trying to address the concerns about black men being killed from a black man's perspective, and he's getting shut down. What am I, what am I bringing up? There's a psychology behind this Black Lives Matter thing, and you want to know what it is? It's eventually about bringing everybody to the Sodom agenda. Read it. I'm going to make my point clear. That's, that's, I'm coming to that. Isaiah, the, read it. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left 
unto us a very small remnant. We should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So I tried to picture how that's going to happen. We should have all, if it was not for the few good men left, we should have all been as Sodom and Gomorrah. Just think about that. If it was not according to this Bible and the men that's about, like the scriptures say, who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity. If it wasn't for those men, everybody would turn into LGBT. I want you to meditate on that. Because when we look at situations where black men are trying, like you said, we go to the court looking for, what was the word you were using? Looking for benefits. You see that the black man gets shut down just like that. Shut down, shut down. After you see a number of that, and then you see on the other side, the LGBT is getting all kinds of things passed. What do you think is going to start to happen to the black men? They're going to be like, well, hell, I will get more protection if I join that. That's the psychology behind it. They want, they, they want, it, they want you to be like, listen, there's no need, I, there's no benefit in me being a man according to God because everything is against it. That's that Skinner box that I was talking about a lot of times. They want to want to push you into into the LGBT thing where you will feel that you will get more protection. Ain't that something? Yeah, you know that was that, it. You notice that if you buy any product, they come with a menu behind it, right? Bishop just put that thing up there, right? This is the menu what these people believe in. That's what they're into. You would think so-called black black. Uh, uh, what is that? Black woman will read the menu and go against it. Oh, yeah, yo, that thing is seeking, man. You understand? I'm telling your brothers, man, like, like you just said, right. is the agenda pushing Saddam Gomorrah to his force speeds? That means they have to come down. That's why they're pushing it like that, man. That thing must become the spiritual Saddam Gomorrah, man. Right. That thing look, must become. Exactly. Look, you straight right. up. Look at the right. black man. They making the black man look like he's he's out of control. Right. Look at him. He's he, look look how he look. They make the black woman and these they ask they're bringing up legitimate points, but they're being shunted into crazy, uncouth, undisciplined, uh, emotional. That's what they're doing to them. But here, but on the other side of the coin, you can have two men sitting down talking about going up each other's rectum, and they could get all kinds of pr protection. That's some. The, we at the end, man, brothers and sisters, bro. We this this is it. There ain't much left. This is it. Hey, this Deacon, is it. Uh, you know, in Genesis, right? When when I when most I God, our forefather Abraham, plead for Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? We was not a nation yet. So, the promise made was made to Abraham. So now, most I got is showing Abraham children. Because when we read it, we have no idea what Abraham saw. Think about it. Abraham plea over and over and over and over. There was not one. Think about it. There was not none. None. So think about today. This place is Sodom and Gomorrah. Now you look at it, you'll be like, wait a minute. That's why this place got to go. Right. The only thing that can, I just say, <laughs> cleanse this place is fire. The same way the only thing that can cleanse Sodom and Gomorrah back then was fire. Right. No matter what Abraham said, God said, no, you don't, you don't get it. I don't think you understand. I got to take her down. It's the same thing here. Right. Abraham said, what if there's 10? Yes. He said, if there's 10, I won't destroy it. Uh, what if there's eight? If there's eight, I won't destroy it. Okay, uh, what about five? Okay, if there's five, I won't destroy it. What about two? Okay, if there's two, I won't destroy it. <laughs> um, real quick, give me um, responsible Richard. Um, Breakfast Club, Billy Porter. Breakfast Club, Billy Porter. Billy Porter is an entertainer. A very, very... Very, very flamboyant, homosexual man. Does Broadway shows. He dresses crazy. And he's married to an Edomite man. He's married to an Edomite male. But I want you to hear what he says. These sodomites despise us. They despise, they're just as much in bed 
With Esau, I go back to Isaiah 28, 15. They're all in bed together. All of them. Spiritually and literally in bed together. Hey, if, if y'all go to, it might get shut down. I don't know what YouTube's going to do. But if you go on a live stream, you can watch, or Periscope, or Facebook, it should play straight through. Yeah. Yeah, this is Billy Porter. Uh, from the beginning. This is Billy Porter's comment on um on the you'll, you'll see. Explain it. Explain itself. Let's play it from the beginning. Watching the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. Billy Porter. What's well, up? What's up? How y'all doing this morning? What's Welcome. up, Mr. Porter? That's the one. I am good. I, I just I came that's off that's of the video right shoot with Miss Lopper, Miss Cindy Lopper. No. Really? No, 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 no. Go to Billy Porter compares yeah. black community. That one. Billy Porter compares black community to white supremacists. Billy Porter compares black community to white supremacists. That's the one I want. So now you guys face right there. That's him there. No, it should, it should jump. When I, the one I want is going to jump to, um, it should go to it. Hey, what I want you all to understand, prophecy got to come to pass. As the bishop was mentioning early on in class, we got to know what time we are living in. Okay, when we read Revelations, it, it's, it, it mentioned that the Israelites are going to be in this great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, right? right? Guess what? That prophecy had to come to pass. This great city have to become that, that, that same as wicked as Sodom and Gomorrah. Homosexuality have to be legalized here. You understand? Obama had to do it. Why? Because prophecy had to be fulfilled. You all understand what I'm saying? But when you look, when you look into ancient Sodom and Gomorrah, right? We was talking about this um, yesterday, Dick. The homosexuals that came to to Job to Job um to Lot House, right? And wanted to rape the angels. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to rape the angels. You know. In order for them to do that and to cause that uproar in the city and come to, come to Job's house and say, give us the person that went up in your house. In order for them to do that, they had power. You all understand what I'm saying? The same way in this society, how the LGBTQ gang, they got power. You understand? So it's the same thing you see going on right now. It's the same thing that was taking place back then. You know, he going to meet to the point of telling you, brother, some of you are going to gotta be fighting these, these homosexuals. Might try to rape you, man. It's crazy like that. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's crazy yeah. like that. If you know what I'm saying, they get in bold like that. Mm -hmm. You understand? Go ahead and play it. It should start from the beginning. It should start here. Well, Billy Porter has been critical of people in the black community who have not prioritized the well-being of those who are not straight and cisgender as well. Here's what he had to say. As a black queer man in America, my basic human rights have been up for legislation every single day from all sides. And by that, I mean that the black community's relationship with the LGBTQ plus community is appalling and eerily similar to that of white supremacists versus black folks. So basically, you, hold it, pause it, I'm sorry. Yeah. Basically, what that, what that man just said, I don't know, he, she, whatever he is, is he what he just said was that the black man is a hate group. Right. That's basically the same thing with LG, what was it, SPLC is trying to do to us, that's exactly, they're going to do that to all black men. Anything that's against that LGBT Q community is a hate group. Right. Because the main people you see that are in opposition to homosexuality is black folks. Always. They're the main ones. That, that, man, that's gay. Man, you know, that's so, that's what, so homosexuals, especially this guy here, said he's against black people who are against homosexuality. That's what he's saying. And that our, and that our opposition towards homosexuality is just as strong as white supremacy. That's what he's saying. So he's basically saying that we're, we're KKK if we're against gay, gay, gay. That's what he's saying. 
Can't play. And, and that spirit that they got in them is no joke either. These men wanted to rape the angels. So can you imagine how fierce they would be to make sure that that filthy agenda gets pushed out near this earth? Go ahead. You cannot expect our demands of equality to be met with any real legislative policy and change when y'all turn around and inflict the same kind of hate and oppression on us. Stop, stop, I know you got stop, stop, stop. Are we hanging homosexuals from trees? Are we, are we putting crosses, burning crosses in the back of their homes? What they're doing is they're trying to equate their injustices towards them to slavery. That's what he's doing. They're trying to, e trying to equate the two. Well, you was in slavery, and in a way, we're slaves too. No. But that's what he's doing. And he's, in, and he's married to Ezem. Go ahead. You guys probably saw this video of Ayanna Dior. She's a black trans woman in Minneapolis, and they were beating her. She had to actually go hide behind the counter in the store and then get mm -hmm. uh, taken into the back so they wouldn't beat her up for being a trans, a black trans woman. And so um, he was discussing that as well. Here's the thing, uh, Billy Porter. Um, I, I got to disagree. Black people do not treat gay people like white supremacists treat black people. White supremacists treat gay people like white supremacists treat everybody, like all of the rights that the LGBT community have have fought for, are, are fighting for. Y'all weren't fighting the black community for that. That was happening in courtrooms. You fighting civil rights in Congress, marriage equality. The that host, was a government issue. The same hold, government that the host doesn't realize the spirit that he's dealing with. He don't realize the demon that he's dealing with. That's the problem. He don't think he don't realize that these people got a serious demon in them. Right. Okay, they use Trayvon Martin as a Trojan horse mm -hmm. to get up there. They, yep. Any any event that happens in the society, they will use anything. Now he's talking about KKK. It's black people. Any anything that they can latch on to further that to further that sick agenda, they will use it. That's the kind of spirit you're dealing with. Right. Now, yeah. now that's all I wanted. Get wisdom of Psalm. And we always use Revelation 11 verse eight about how America is spiritual Sodom and Egypt. But Simon used the same comparison in the, in the same way. He did the exact same thing. Wisdom of Solomon 19 and verse 13. We're going to read to verse 17. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 19 verse 13. And punishments came upon the sinners not without former signs by the force of thunders. Right, so punishment came upon the Egyptians with signs. The plagues, the thunders, the hail, the darkness. Watch this. For they suffered justly according to their own wickedness. The Egyptians, go ahead. In so much as they used a more hard and hateful behavior toward strangers. Like Billy Porter has towards us. Same thing, a hard and hateful behavior towards strangers. Referring to us being, remember we were in Egypt the first time, they loved Joseph at first. Then as time went on, new kingdom rose up, they forgot about Joseph and began to mistreat us. A harsh behavior towards strangers, meaning us and their land. Go ahead. For the Sodomites did not receive those. Stop. Now he's flipping it over from Egypt to Sodom. How Israel was mistreated by the strangers as strangers in Egypt. The Sodom has mistreated Lot and the angels in Sodom. The same behavior. Read again. For the Sodomites did not receive those when, whom they knew not when they came. Likewise, the Egyptians did not receive us Israelites when we came over there. Same thing he's saying in, in, in the new kingdom he's going into. Go ahead. But these brought friends into bondage that had well deserved of them. They put us in slavery when, when, when if it wasn't for us, they wouldn't have existed. Because remember, Joseph saved Egypt. But they still they forgot about his works instead of hell with him and put us in slavery. And made us build their pyramids and so forth. Go ahead. And not only so, but peradventure some respect shall be had of those because they use strangers not friendly. Some understanding should be had of those because they use strangers not friendly. So the Egyptians were against um, foreigners, us, and when Lot came into the land and the angels came into the land, they were unfriendly against, unfriendly against them also. Go ahead, watch this. But these very grievously afflicted them, whom they had received with feastings, and were already made partakers of the same laws with them. We were partakers of the same laws with them in Egypt. Go ahead. Therefore, even with blindness. Stop, stop. Therefore, even with blindness. Remember, he had them dark and darkness for three days, Egypt. They, were, they couldn't see that for three days. They start losing their minds. Go ahead. Therefore, even with blindness, were these stricken as those were at the doors of the righteous man. See that? As those at the doors of the righteous man. When the angels blinded those men at the door. 
trying to hurt the righteous. Same thing happened with them trying to hurt us in Egypt. He blinded them for three days. The angels blinded the, um, the Sodomites for trying to hurt Lot and the angels. Go ahead. When being compassed about with horrible great darkness. So the same way the angels blinded those, home, those Sodomites, the same way the most I blinded the Egyptians in that darkness. Mm. Same thing being compared. They were, they were mistreating foreigners. They have an evil, what he's saying is they have an evil behavior. Evil, when it comes to the righteous, they hate you. That's why he said we're white supremacists. We're just as bad. I'm giving you the comparison. Go ahead. Everyone sought the passage of his own doors. Everyone, remember, yeah, Sodomites were still trying to rape them. Still trying to get into the door, even when in blindness. And then when the most high bond, the Egyptians, they still chased after us anyway and got killed by the water. Same comparison. So, so Solomon compared Sodom and Egypt together with the same ill behavior towards the righteous. That's what I'm showing you. You understand? That's why America is spiritually Sodom and Egypt. Same agenda, same evil towards the righteous. Towards Moses, towards Lot. Same evil. And the Lord's compassion of darkness, all the plagues upon them, plagues for America's falling apart, unraveling at the seams, the president's wilding out, countries turning against them, and they're still pushing the agenda, despite the plagues. All right, that's all. Get that in Romans, Romans 1, please. Romans, where Paul, just like you said, how they had that, they got that spirit on them. It's an evil spirit. Paul addressed that in Romans, the first chapter. I just want to get to the point. Start at 28. Romans 1, 28. Now the point we want is verse 30, but read down. Even as they did not like to retain God in the knowledge, God Y'all going to realize that this be Black Lives Matter, they don't want to retain God in their mind at all. They want, their agenda ultimately is get rid of the Bible. Go ahead. God gave them over. Wait a minute. And you know why? Hold that. Hold that, uh, uh, Liam. Go back to what y'all was up pulled in. I think it was Isaiah 1 and 9. This is why they want to get rid of the Bible. Isaiah 1 and 9. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. So what is God saying? If this book wasn't around to check us, we'd all, everybody in this room that says, nah, not me, not me. The way this white man is, TVs, they got the gay agenda. Uh, the commercials, songs, um, Cartoons. education, they're pushing it. Even, huh, what would you say? In church, right. Like in Nigeria, where they asked for help against Boko Haram, they said only if you accept the same-sex agenda. They're foreign policies, right. God is saying if it wasn't for the Bible and those that hold on to it, all of us were given to that spirit. Every last one of us. That's what he's saying. Okay? Going back now to Romans 1. Romans 1 verse 20, 28. And even as they did not yes. like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Meaning void of judgment. Go ahead. To do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Now, these are the spirits that God said is inside of them. Go ahead. Fornication, mm -hmm. wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Wait a minute. Did things. you see that part, haters of God? Mm -hmm. Don't ever think that they, when they say they love God, they love, that's a lie. The Most High is saying they have a spirit in them that hates God. That's what the Bible is saying. Backbiters, not that part, the part, haters of God. Go ahead. Haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. <laughs> this so now that inventors of evil things, I, we could get nasty, but I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Go ahead. Disobedient to parents without understanding. And when you try to show them righteousness, the laws of God, they're always confused. I don't understand. Those are the spirits that come out of them. Disobedient, the parents, they want to get rid of the father. Right. Exactly. Go ahead. Disobedient to parents without understanding. Covenant breakers without natural affection. Uh -uh. Without natural affection. Without natural, it's unnatural what they're doing. The lust that's within them. Okay, watch this. Read on. Implacable, 
unmerciful. Stop. Now you might say to yourself, self, we just read Mark 7, 21 earlier. Aren't those the same spirits that's in everybody? The difference is the next verse. Go ahead. Who knowing the judgment of God, these people under the Sodom agenda, they know the judgment of God. Our people that's on the street that are in uh, various forms of wickedness, they're the ones that stop and listen. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was in the Bible. I didn't know. But the Bible says we got in this group here who knowing the judgment of God, go ahead, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Are worthy. They know that. Believe me, the name that God you just showed, he knows this. They hate this. Go ahead. Not only do the same. Here it comes. But have pleasure in them that do them. They only have pleasure. If you live like them, they have pleasure in that. You're an ally. You're an right. ally. You're an ally. That's exactly what it's going into. If I may, Bishop. Yes, the word implacable means Implacable means easily calmed, gentle, and forgiving. When you are implacable, you're the opposite of that. You're not forgiving. You're not easily appeased. You pass law after law after law to push your agenda. It Unre means relentless. They are relentless. They push your agenda because, regardless of what you say. If it means killing you, getting rid of your Bible, getting you fired from your job, they will do it. They are implacable. And if you are an ally, there's a little side said, if you are, uh, accept what they do, or you are an ally, you die with them. That's what God says. If you're not a part of the solution, you are part of the problem. That's what God says. You die with them. And you know what Christ said in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Black Lives Matter is against that. In fact, they are anti-life, mm -hmm. anti-Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what the whole thing is. When Christ said, even when John, was it John? When he said, even, yeah, first John, even now are there many antichrists. That whole lifestyle is against Christ. What are you going to say, Lava? You remember that the statement Revelation made, it said, uh, the destruction said, he deceived the whole world. Mm -hmm. Then he used in title to push his agenda. But the title Black Life Matter don't have nothing to do with black people. Right. <laughs> they got to do with homosexual. Exactly. <laughs> Lesbian. Lie, adultery, fornication, murder. You understand? That's what this whole thing is about. When the, thing was when the case was argued in the Supreme Court, I guarantee you, not one time did George Floyd name was mentioned. Mm -hmm. That's just my feeling. I could be wrong, but I, it certainly wasn't mentioned for the, for the uh, point of the reason how it got up there. No, 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 no. He was mentioned with the senator uh, from uh, Representative Matt Getz, and they kept shutting him down. See that? Pow. Boom. They, that, that whole thing has nothing to do you with do. George Floyd. You see that? Remember, he was in there trying to get some kind of legislation right. for black people. Exactly. He mm -hmm. was using the deaths of black people by the hands of wicked right. police. Exactly. They, were at, we're not they didn't want to hear that at, at all. Hey, let's sidestep. Hey, what about I have mixed race children? Right. We're not talking about your mixed race kids. Y'all see that? We just saw that on the screen. Exactly. Look at Baruch 4. 4 and 30. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 30. Come on. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem he, is a people before it's a place. Go ahead. For he that... Gave thee that name will comfort thee. Come on. Miserable are they that afflicted thee. The Bible says miserable are they that afflicted thee. And, re and rejoiced at thy fall. So the nations that afflicted us and rejoiced at the fall of Jerusalem, they're going to be miserable. Watch this. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is New York City. Miserable is Georgia. Miserable is Missouri. Miserable is the United States of America and all their cities. Miserable is London, the cities of the UK. Read that again. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Miserable is she that received thy sons. That's America, Babylon the Great. That's the UK. They received the sons of Jerusalem. The Bible says misery. 
They're going to be miserable. Go ahead. For as she rejoiced as thy ruin. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin. And was glad of thy fall. Uh -huh. So shall she be grieved for her own desolation. She's going to be grieved for her own desolation. Go ahead. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude. Mm. And her pride shall be turned into mourning. And her pride shall be turned into mourning. Let's go back to 2nd Ezra 9. We're almost done. Second is just nine, and we were at verse, the verse about benefits. Second is chapter nine and verse nine. Right. Then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Right, those that receive benefits and have not known me, meaning known the Lord. So one state of benefits, like we read in John eleven forty seven, you get these pe our people that get high in society. They become congressmen, senators, things of that nature. Okay, uh, famous actors and athletes. They and they receive benefits on that level. But then there's others when they want to go beyond that to get benefits for the nation as a whole. They cannot do it. Go ahead. And they that have loathed my law, meaning hated my law. While they had yet liberty. While they had yet liberty to repent. And when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not. That, didn't we just read that in Romans 1? I'm confused. I don't understand what the Bible's saying. No, that doesn't make sense to me. God is love. God is love. Go ahead. But despised it. See that? But remember, haters of God. But despised it. Go ahead. The same must know it after death. By pain. Now that's a heavy thing right there. The same must know it after death by pain. Wow. Give me that in Revelation 14 9. Y'all keep waiting for a microchip. Keep on waiting. The book of You have a gay guy that says, I ain't accepting a microchip. And they'll go, You got the dumb bum camp, B H I. Yeah, he didn't accept the microchip, but he's gay. It doesn't matter if he's gay. He didn't take that chip. Go ahead. Watch this. Revelation 14, 9. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9. And the, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image. If you worship the white man and his image. That's the image of Caesar Borgia, the white image of Jesus. Go ahead. And receive his mark on his forehead. And receive his mark. In his, that, that's their policies. Okay. No matter what they are. Here you go. Oh, no, no. Let's talk about a microchip. Okay, let's see. Or in his hand. Uh-huh. The same shall drink. Meaning you support it. Go ahead. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Mm -hmm. And he shall be tormented with fire. This is the part about being, uh, he shall, death by, death by pain that we just read. Read that part again. He shall what? And he shall be tormented with fire. And brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Mm, go ahead. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth, ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Whoever receiveth the mark of his name. You, there, there's no scripture about microchips. I'm sorry, brothers. I'm sorry. Now, whether or not he's making one, sure, he's probably making one. Daddy, but that ain't what this is talking about. Talking about you believe there's something you believe. Like, for example, let's say you don't take the microphone, but you accept uh, transgenders and Black Lives Matter. Guess what's going to happen? The same shall know it after death by pain. Because their policy is you must accept same sex. That's one of their policies. Right. Yeah. And there's many others. Right. That's wrong. That's, I say it on the mic. Nobody can hear you. That's Isaiah 1 and 9 again. Exactly. What does a chip have to do with that? Everybody going to become Sodom and, and, and in their mind. Sodom and Gomorrah. Real quick, 2 Ezra 827. 2 Ezra 827. No, the chip is not the mark of the beast. I do not believe in that nonsense. Okay? Oh, yeah, I heard you believe that. Yeah, I heard it too. Yeah. Some big fat liar from the BHI bum camp said, you oh, yeah, believe. And I'm too afraid Only to you, say, and you're too and afraid to, to speak. Yes, yes. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Second Ezra 8, 27. Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen. One more time. Regard not 
the wicked inventions of the heathen. The Bible says to guard not the wicked inventions of the other nations. Their chip, their vaccinations, I mean, do not be afraid of these things. Regard not. Read again. Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen, Go ahead. but the desire of those that keep thy testimonies in affliction. That's where your focus should be. Regarding those who keep the testimonies while in afflictions, in captivity. That should be your focus. Not Esau's technology. We know it exists. But it's not what you're making it out to be. You're making 5G, it more than what it is. 5G. 5G, 4G, 6G. You know, all these BHI that's talking about 5G, I guarantee y'all, none of y'all with your 5G doctrine will throw away your 5G cell phone or your 5G computer. They ain't throwing it away. That they're using to watch class right now. Exactly. <laughs> hey, hey, this week, this week, everybody's cell phone went down. Everybody went crazy. You know yeah, T Mobile. T Mobile. T Mobile. Right. Meso PTS. Oh, you're yeah, just trying to bring the 5G through yeah, T Mobile. Yeah. Right. Everybody went crazy. Everybody, like, yo, my phone is not working. I can't call. I can't. <laughs> That's crazy. So now just throw your phone away. Okay. So did you say, don't take the vaccine? Yes, I did. Girl, you got dumb BHI camp saying that we said, take the, the what is this disease? COVID 19 vaccine. Vaccine. Where, I'm like, where did I say that? There's no COVID 19 vaccine. I see, yeah, these damn bums. That's what they are, bums. The wicked as hell. Get me a her second Ezra. Oh, you and second Ezra's eight now, right? Verse 56. Read that. Second Ezra chapter eight, verse 56. For when they had taken liberty, they despised the most high, thought scorn of his law and forsook his, forsook for scorn his ways. Of his law and forsook his ways. Go back to second Ezra's nine. Second Ezra's chapter. 9 and 12. Verse 12. The same must know it after death by pain. So this life ain't over. Even if you got people that say, if you're wicked as hell and die, the bum camps, you'll come back in the kingdom of heaven and be righteous as a child. I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Read verse 12 again. The same must know it after death by pain. We just read in Revelation 14. That if you worship the beast or his image or receive his mark in your forehead, or, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire and be tormented forever. Oh, no. So just get a black highlight and cross that out. Yeah. They, no, no, you could be wicked as hell. Right. You come back as a baby. So, Bishop, if that's the case, why keep the commandments? Exactly. We're going to die and come back righteous anyway. That's why they're against the commandments. Why are you keep, you, they always say the commandments are all about the Lord. They hate God's commandments. So they'll be adulterers, buying prostitutes. And let me tell you, the envy and hate from the bum camps, the black BHI, it's envy about money. Money and recognition. I'll use those two. They want the fame and fortune. We ain't even got no fortune. They want the, g- give me the words, the recognition or what they think is notoriety that IUIC has. You can have it, bum camps. You just keep the commandments and you can have it. But they're sitting there angry every week. Bro, it's like I am their God. Look at Nathaniel. Look at Nate said. Nate said this. Can y'all get my stuff out of your mouth? <laughs> just take it out. Don DeMarco. I don't get it. See, I didn't say the word. I didn't say it. I'm sorry. I'm so- I didn't say it. Yeah, so... One camp might like that. Talking about look at his abs. Look at his. I wish I had abs. Look at his oily chest. What the hell is this? Go where you at, Officer Leon? Verse 13. Read 12 again. The same must know it after death by pain. We got to remember that thing. There's a judgment after death. There's a judgment of either eternal life or pain. This is the final judgment coming. Go ahead. And therefore. Be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when. This is what the angel is telling Ezra. Don't worry about the ungodly and how they're going to be punished and when. Go ahead. But inquire how the righteous shall be saved. That's our concern. When we're on the street, our focus should be how the righteous shall be saved. Bringing them into this truth so that they can get the kingdom. Come on. Whose the world is. Whose the world is. And for whom the world is created. The world, that's where y'all was going over today at camp. Deacon Malachi. 
that the world was made for the Israelites, for our sake. Give me that in 2 Ezra 6. Or is it 7? I always fix to get that one. Yeah. Around 56. Yes, sir. 2 Ezra chapter 6, verse 56. And as for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing. Oh, that's what I want to say. When y'all see people filming y'all at camp, sometimes it may, might be for righteousness that they want to watch the video later on and share it. Sometimes, I'll say more than likely, it's taking note of what you're saying and they'll ask you questions to hem you up. I give an example. You're out on the street teaching. Let me, who do I want to stand up and answer this question? Oh, spiritual father. Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. You stand up. I want you to answer this question. They call me Ben Bishop. Okay. You're, you're, you're teaching, right? You just said, Romans 9, 13, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. You know that right. scripture, right? So you're, t now, I'm, the, I'm the, the antagonist, the scoffer. My camera is rolling. So you mean to tell me, if you see a little white baby choking right beside you, what would you do? We ought to teach the law of status of commandment, blacks, Hispanics, and American Indians. Oh, he didn't answer the question. Let me ask again. You, try, you trying to help spiritual father? I'm going to ask you again. Thank you, Cap. I'm going to ask you again. You're, I'm recording you now. Okay. So if you see a little white, like I'll have my little white daughter with me. My daughter is choking right beside you. What will you do? I'm gonna call Jacob, have I loved? I'm going to call 911. Okay, there you go. Y'all got to, hey, you captains, if y'all got stupid brothers, take them down. Remember Mordecai, when there was a plot against the king of Persia, Mordecai saved his life. Don't be out there saying stupid things like you're going to let babies, don't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Now, now, BHI right now is going to edit that part right to get that out. Let me tell you something. They're going to hang on every word we say. Just yes, remember that thing. Right. Hey, Yemen we got to. Yemen sometimes is the brother who get in an easy uh, damn emotion. Stick to the script, man. Hey, hey, listen, we got to roll. When we teach him, we got to more convert, conform ourselves to Christ and teach like Christ. Mm -hmm. You understand? When Christ, when the way how Christ taught, they came with questions and asked him questions to entrap him. You know what I mean? And a lot of time, Christ let them answer it for himself or Christ said, thou sayest, but right. Christ was very crafty in how he dealt with them because mm -hmm. he understood the reason you asking me this question is to use my words against me to kill me. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So it's the same thing with you brothers out there that's out in the street teaching. If we, is no more, they, is no more, you could just say whatever you want. The things you say is going to be used against you and against all of us. You understand? To destroy us. Right. You know, so when people come to you with certain questions, you got to, you got to start to roll in that same spirit that Christ was rolling in, that same spirit that Paul and the apostles was rolling in, and that right there is you, is us taking our teaching to another level. Because um, the, the Black Lives Matter movement, they coming for us, brothers. You understand? Understand, we are war. You understand? And they, their job is to stop this truth. Their job is to paint us as a hate group. The job, their job is to paint us that we hate all mankind. You understand? That's what they did in Rome, in ancient Rome, when they killed Peter and, they, and, and, um, and, and Paul and the, all the apostles. They paint the image of the Christians that was living in Rome at that time as a hate group, a hater of all humanity. Right. But the people that was wrong at that time, they, the people are wrong at that time. They say, they say we. That's 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 not how they. they that's not how these people is. We had eyewitness accounts that was like, no, these people is not like that. But Rome was able to. Paint, put that image of them, cause a fire. Nero was able to cause a fire in Rome and put and paint that image on our forefathers and get all of them killed. You understand? So honest, you brothers understand the war that we are fighting. You know, be careful with what coming out of your mouth. You know what I mean? Hey, remember what they said to Christ. Is it lawful or good to pay 
taxes to Caesar? They wouldn't see Christ's answer. To hem him up before Caesar. He says, give me a coin. Whose face is on this? Yeah. Is that true? We got to pay taxes? He said, give me a coin. Whose face is on it? And then he answered. He said, they said Caesar. He said, render to Caesar things that are Caesar's, but unto God what is God's. And understand, brothers, this is for the stupid BHR listening. Because I know a lot of you bum bastards out there listening. I love y'all, though. I do love y'all. Um, God's laws supersede man's laws. Everybody understand that? God's laws supersede man's laws. Um, not, like you just said, when uh, Nero said the Israelites uh, burned down Rome, they had to lie on Peter and them and the apostles, that, and they lied. That's the only way, that should be the only way to get us. It should not be, because they want to get public opinion against us. They don't want the one-third to repent. Give me that one in Esther, or about a certain malicious people who know what that is. Right. That's what Bezalel and them tried to do. Mark Carroll tried to get public opinion against us and flat face. That's what they tried to do. Who knows what that is? 13 verse 4 and 5. Read that. Esther chapter 13 and verse 4. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world, there was scattered a certain malicious people. There's scattered, meaning us, a certain malicious people. Go ahead. That had laws contrary to all nations. Right, God's laws, his commandments. Go ahead. And continually despised the commandments of kings. Y'all see that part right there? You see that one part right there is what I wanted to get to. Right. It said, read that again. And continually despised the commandments of kings. They said, see, king? You give a law, like remember in Daniel, they said, King, why don't you make a, a rule, a law, that whoever doesn't worship this image should be killed. And the king went for it. Don't think, now here in America, they're going to create laws, and that's what they do. All these new legislations, because there's they, one thing they didn't bring out. They said the new legislation for LGBT, there's one aspect that's going to affect religious groups, but they didn't say what it is yet. They did not say what it is. Believe me. They're going to start to say that the Bible, if you read it as is, it's hate speech. Just watch. Remember in Canada, there were certain, hey, Captain Shem, remember in Canada, they said, we couldn't read Leviticus 2013 out there. You couldn't read Romans 1 out there. That was in Canada. They're changing laws, making this book an enemy to society. Read that again. Declared unto us that in all nations... Throughout the world, there was scattered a certain malicious people that had laws contrary to all nations and continually despised the commandments of kings. Mm -hmm. So as the uniting of our kingdoms honorably intended by us cannot go forward. Right. Seeing then, we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. They said it's only this people. And believe me, <laughs> they talk about the Israelites. That's exactly what it's about the Israelites. Go ahead. Differing in the strange manner of their laws and evil affected to our state. See that? And evil affected to our state. Working all the mischief they can. Right. Working all on the street. Working all the mischief they can. That our kingdom may not be firmly established. Right. So as you read down, that's when they wanted to kill us. Right. You worried about a damn microchip. You simple as hell. Go back to second as you're now. We're almost done. They don't want to be in the real yeah. Right. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 13. 13. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, whom the world is, and for whom the world is created. Right. That, we, went, we were going to uh, uh, Second Ezra 6, right? Yes, sir. Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 56. As for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and as liking the abundance of them unto... I want to one about the earth made for us. 55. Yes, sir. You. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. So the world was made for the Israelites' sake. Go ahead. And as for the other people, which also come of Adam, 
Thou hast said that they are nothing, mm -hmm. but be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Okay. And now, O oh Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Uh oh, go ahead. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, the, the only begotten, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover. And you know this, you know, remember it says, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son regarding Christ. That same thing is talking about Israel here. Read that again in verse 58. But we thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover are given into their hands. Uh -huh. If the world now be made for our sakes. The world was made for our sakes. Watch this. Why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? The same thing that he said is the same thing Isaiah asked in Isaiah 63, 16. Get that. The world was only made for our sakes, and we got to believe that. Our sons and daughters got to know that. We got a great promise coming to us. Read that. Isaiah 63, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Doubtless thou art our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us. Right. Abraham is ignorant of us. Abraham don't know us today in this generation. Go ahead. And Israel acknowledge us not. And the, I, Israel doesn't acknowledge us. Israel doesn't acknowledge a group of people called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics. Go ahead. Thou, O Lord, art our father. Thou, O Lord, art our father. Go ahead. Our Redeemer. You are our Redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. Mm -hmm. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways? O Lord, this, remember, this is similar to Ezra's. When Ezra was complaining to the Lord and said, Why'd you put that, uh, that wicked heart in Adam? So Isaiah is saying it's very similar. Oh Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways? Go ahead. And harden our heart from thy fear. And harden our heart from thy fear. This goes with, what's that scripture? It's the wisdom of Solomon 9 that says, um, the flesh uh, presses down. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Read that real quick. Read that real quick. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and verse 13. Wisdom of this is going to explain how the Lord hardened our heart from his fear. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 13. For what man is he that can know the that counsel of... Verse 15. 15, 15. Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 15. For the corruptible body... For the corruptible body. These are the bodies that we live in right now. These bodies. These fleshly bodies. Go ahead. Press it down the souls. It presses down our souls. Y'all gotta understand that. The flesh that we in, Solomon says this flesh presses down the soul within. Go ahead. And the earthly tabernacle weighs down the mind. And the, these earthly tabernacles weighs down the mind. Presses down the mind. Restricts our spiritual understanding. Go ahead. That muses upon many things. The mind that muses upon many things. Was that it? Yes, sir. Go back now to Isaiah 63. Isaiah chapter 63, verse, verse 17. 17. Oh, Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? That's why Paul said that, that which I would do, that I do not. But what I would, how does it go? You know, I can't quote. But what I would, I do not. So then there's no more me that doeth it, but sin that lieth in me. What the hell is this? So all that goes back to what we read in Wisdom of Solomon 9, 15. Where, and I, no, 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 I'm not making an excuse for no sin. I'm just telling what the Bible says. Where this flesh, it, it, it's easy to sin. Okay? It's harder for us to do righteousness. That's why in Ezekiel 36, find me that. Ezekiel 36, the near the end, where the Lord says, I will change your stony heart to flesh. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Find me that. Find Ezekiel me that. 36, verse 26. Uh -huh. A new heart also will I give you. See that? God got to give us a new heart, a new mind. Go ahead. And a new spirit will I put within you. He got to put a new spirit within us. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. See that? He's going to take the stony heart out of our flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. Go back to Isaiah 63 now. 
Verse 17 again. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and hardened our heart from thy fear? That goes with Galatians 5, where Paul says, this, I can't quote. I'm, I got to paraphrase. Y'all know what I'm talking about. The spirit is contrary to the... Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Five and Galatians 5. Around 15. Galatians... You can stay on that all day and get a lesson out of that thing. Is it 17? Uh, about, yes, sir. These yes, are sir. contrary one to yes, the sir. other. Galatians 5, 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, mm -hmm. and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that ye would. So that precepts with Romans 7. That precepts here in Isaiah 63, 17. Let's go right on back there again. Isaiah 63, verse 17. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways, and harden our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servant's sake, the tribes of thine inheritance. So Isaiah pleaded to the Lord to return the 12 tribes of Israel. Understand that thing. You got this uh, replacement, what is it called? Replacement doctrine out there? Or theory where... The Gentiles have taken over. No, 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 no. The Bible's talking about restoring the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. They've possessed the earth but a little while. 40 years under David and another 40 under Solomon. Go ahead. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. Go ahead. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. God never bear rule over the heathen nations. Go ahead. They were not called by thy name. The other nations were never called by the name of Israel. From there, give me Daniel 7, 27. Y'all know this one. I love this one. Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. That means the whole planet earth. Go ahead shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. That's right. So it's not just the planet Earth. It's the people and the wealth and everything that's on it is going to be given to us. Go ahead. Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And our kingdom is going to be an everlasting kingdom. Come on. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. And all dominions are going to serve and obey the king of kings. That's to him there. Go ahead. And we're going, to, we're going to make them bow the knee. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Hitherto is the end of the matter. Meaning that's what the whole Bible is about. Nation is men leading by example. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord!